My favorite podcast is Two Dits and Tits. I put up my tits to get down with this. My favorite podcast, Two Dits and Tits. We fight and then we celebrate with tits. What's up? You're rolling with another episode of Jits and Tits. Damn! The Jits and Tits podcast is brought to you by Brandon Remy of Remy Fit, the premier online training outlet for combat sports athletes. Focusing on the four pillars of performance, movement, mindset, sleep, and nutrition. Check Brandon out at RemyFit.com and be Remy Fit on Instagram. We're also brought to you by our home base, Island Kava, Long Island's first and only kava bar, serving exotic teas and relaxing elixirs that will help you recover and wind down after an intense training session. Island Kava is located right in the heart of Patchogue. We're also sponsored by Total Motion 360, a brand new at-home fitness product coming soon to the marketplace. This innovative fitness product combines functional training with traditional training, taking it to levels never seen before. Total Motion 360 takes concepts from landmine training and mixes in movements from yoga, Pilates, and Tai Chi, creating fun total body workouts to promote balance, strength, and form. Check them out on Facebook and Instagram at Total Motion 360. Visit their website, TotalMotion360.com. Jits and Tits Podcast is also brought to you by Lalo, a carbonated kava drink inspired by the culture of the south coast of the Fiji Islands, where locals have been cultivating and enjoying kava for generations. Their ingredients are sourced straight from the South Pacific, staying true to their island roots. Inspired by the island lifestyle, Lalo looks to counterbalance the caffeinated, work-hard, play-hard culture of our time. You can find Lalo at Island Kava, Long Island's major distributor of this relaxing and island-inspired drink. What's going on, fellas? What's yo, up? Yo. What's up? Back at it again on a beautiful Sunday. A little, a little late, <sighs> but... Holler. A little late in the evening, but I don't know. It's a little better a little late, dude. I like, I like it. it. We're, all, like we're it. all awake. We're all awake. Yeah. We all got those eye boogers and shit. We're ready to go. Big shout out to uh, Andrew Stock for uh, showing up today. Yeah, our homie's here. What's up? What's up? Big, uh, we had you on before, but big ups again. Glad to be back. Yeah, man. We appreciate you, dude. Yeah, thank you. So, uh... So we had the flex fights last night and yeah. Friday night oh. and, Friday. and Friday. That was a lot of fun. Last Jits night. and tits had a nice little booth there with, with Lalo. Yeah. It's always good teaming up with Lalo at the, uh, the events. It is. It's always a good time. It's cool doing the booth and just like meeting people and shit. It's cool having people come up to us and being like, yo, we like, we listen to the podcast, you know, it's yeah. like, we have no idea who they are. Yeah. D rocks boy. Uh, I know. Uh, oh no. I freed him. Right. Oh, Pat from, uh, no limits. <laughs> Pat yeah. From yeah, no not, limits. not Pat yeah, Carroll, yeah. Pat, uh, Apria, I think, is his last name. Oh, he's from uh, No Limits. Yeah, he. Um, I was teaching a class one night, and he, like, in the middle of the class, was like, "Dude, I saw a Jits and Tits post on Instagram, and I saw that it was you guys." He's like, "So I decided to check it out." He's like, "I already had my Spotify open, so I put it on." He's like, "And I've listened to every single episode nonstop the last two weeks." He's like, "I'm all caught up. I fucking love it, dude. <laughs> that's, that's a lot. That's awesome. a commitment. That's like what, how many? What do we have? Forty three episodes out? Forty six? Yeah. yeah. He said he listened to like thirty plus episodes inside of like five six days. Damn! Oh, wow. <laughs> Damn, dude, that's Which awesome. Which was like, dude, I'm real like, fan. Yeah, Mike, you just made my whole. I texted you guys that immediately when I found out. I made my whole day. I was like, yeah, dude, that this made, is awesome. They made my day too. Yeah, yeah. that's on me. But uh, yeah, he, he he rolled up on you at the table, right? Yeah, yeah, he came over. I was like, yo, you. You uh you want a Layla? And he's like, nah, I want one of those shirts, bro. And I was wearing the <laughs> the OG Jits and Tits shirt. And he's just like, I'm like, ah, oh, we don't got any more right now. And he's just like, ah, oh. he's like, I'm like, yeah, I'm like, you know, if you want, you can order. He's like, no, no, I know, I know all about you guys. He's what like, order? I love it. He's like, I found you on Spotify. He's like, I was listening to, you. I follow your Instagram. What about the dude from Georgia? <laughs> oh my god, that was hilarious, <laughs> dude. So so, you, give me the whole background to the start of that because I got I got the good follow up for so, it. So so. I was there last, uh, this was Friday night, the first night, and, you know, this guy comes up, and he's, like, looking at the thing, and I'm like, oh, I'm like, hey, you know, what's going on, talking to him, and he's like, I love the hat, he's like, where, where can I get one, he's like, oh, no, he goes, he's like, let me buy this, I was like, oh, I was like, we, have, you know, we're pre-selling them right now, I was like, they're supposed to be here, but they're coming in Tuesday, so, you know, I'm like, you can Venmo, leave cash wherever you want, blah, blah, blah. He's like, no, 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 no. He's like, I want this one right here. He's like, <laughs> he's like, I'm going back to Georgia tonight. He's like, I'm leaving. He's like, I, I he's like, this is, he's, he's coming home with me. <laughs> I'm like, oh man. I'm like, uh, like, I'm like, dude, it's our last one. Like, you know, I'm like, like trying to talk him out of it to just pre-order one. And he's like, I'll pay extra, whatever. I'm like, and I'm like, all right, whatever, dude. I'm like, just give us like 25 bucks. So he pays me and then go yeah, ahead. So last night. 
uh, I'm cornering Sergio and the fight ends and we're in the cage waiting for the decision and I look across at his at the coach and I'm like I see this gray beanie on him I'm like I see the leather and I'm like wait a minute it is it's a jits and tits hat so I walk over <laughs> to him you know they come over you know you always the respect after the fight I'm like hey man I'm like I love your hat he goes it's cool right I go yeah I go that's I'm a part of that podcast man I'm like that's me and my boys he's like what I'm like yeah dude he's like I told the guy I'd pay extra for it. it was the last one. He's like, I told him I'm not leaving Georgia without this thing. That's fucking awesome. I was awesome. like, that's so cool, man. I was like, I really appreciate it. And he's like, dude, I love it. I'm like, well, make sure you go listen. And he's like, <laughs> I will. And by the way, good fight. Nice. <laughs> nice. Yeah, fucking go like our Instagram page too, you fucker. <laughs> Cocksucker. That was probably like one of the more demoralizing things too after, you know, unfortunately losing and, you know, always show respect before I leave the cage, go over to his coaches. I look and I see a hat and I'm like, that looks just like the arena jits and tits. I'm like, <laughs> ah. Oh, you Damn. said something to him too? I didn't say the hat. Oh. Like, I didn't say anything about the hat, but I was in the middle of saying good fight. I looked at the, the hat and I'm like, Wait, he was the uh, coach to the kid that you fought? Yeah. Oh. Dude, I'm like, how darn, he's wearing, that? wearing, I was about to say, all right, at least he got some good taste. Yeah, serious. <laughs> supporting the boys. Yeah. That's hilarious. Thanks for supporting my homies. Good how, job. how ironic though, right? Like, so funny. Dude, it was, yeah, it was so funny. I'm like, no way. It's so funny, dude. It's hilarious. Yo, and what's crazy, too, is it was hot as fuck in that place, especially in the cage yeah. with the lights. That guy was rocking that beanie, drip sweating. No. That's how my, yeah, bro. He oh must have really God. liked that how, hat. How did they do with the setup over there? Because I like the Stereo Garden setup and the space setup. I haven't seen, like, the uh, Smithtown Sports Arena setup So, yet. for the fights, it looks good. For the booths, I think you guys were saying, yeah, it was, was kind of like the, the traffic little, flow wasn't there, yeah. right? Yeah. But it was, I mean, it was nice being next to the door because, like you said, it was so hot. <laughs> <in there. laughs> I went so. to security guard. I'm like, yo, is it cool we prop this open a little bit more? And he's like, yeah, guy's in like a full suit. Yeah. He's like, yeah, yeah, prop that shit open. I'm like, all right, cool. I feel like yeah, I, I, I seen you bust the Malelo too. Like, thanks, bro. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like if we were over by like, the food, it would have been better. Why? I think because the food would have brought more people. Yeah. yeah Dude, did you see, see the line some of those pace people had? The like, what? The like pretzels and shit. The hot dog place. Dude, the pretzels were good last time. Yeah. Those, those so this is what good. we do next time. Just put a beer sign instead. Yeah. Mad people show up. Like, yeah, no, nah, we're all out of beer, but we got this leg. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. That might be the move. Dude. Might be Yo, the there move. was a couple people who came up to us and we were like, oh, it's kava, blah, blah. And then he's like, oh. Uh, is this alcohol? We're like, no, no alcohol. He's like, oh, all right, see you later. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah he, next time, just be like, yeah, yeah, it feels just like it. <laughs> Dude, it'd be dope if we could get a keg of like kratom there and then just be slinging kratom, kratom lay low combo. Oh yeah. yeah, people would love that shit. Yeah, yeah, just lie next time. Be like, no, it's it's like a white claw, but better. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Or, or, or bring like beers and white claws and just like sell them too for cheaper than everyone else. <laughs> <laughs> cut everybody. I don't know how that would go. Over. No, we get we, we get tossed out real quick. <laughs> yeah, we're trying to be a staple at the flex yeah. fights. Yeah, that, that might that might not go too good. We're, we we're slinging PBRs. Yeah, <laughs> gone in 60 I think seconds. um, I think the setup, Terrence, though, like uh, the and stock. I think you could uh chime in actually so can you because you were at stereo garden and shit um in terms of like the feel of the event it feels different in the sports arena. they did a really good job still making it look good but i feel like when it's at like stereo garden or the space or the when it was at the space it was like a an event the space yeah it feels i like like because like it it you it have really yeah because they have the locker rooms downstairs you have like the walkout and everything and like there those you kinda, places are are designed for that yeah you know yeah but honestly like as an athlete i liked the sports arena like right up there with the space because I can't li uh, say I really like the patch hog location. I was only cornering when I've been back there, but there's no warm up room. It's like no, having, yeah, it's bad. It's lit a little bit bigger than the room we're sitting in right now for Damn. both corners and uh, you know really? it's everything. That small. Yeah, you, it's get, tiny. you get like two of these or one and a half, so you're not really dealing with that much space back there. We had plenty of room to warm up in. You know, the space had it best because you actually had like almost like dedicated locker rooms yeah. that you were at, but. I liked it there, and then the field was pretty cool with the elevated stage to walk and stuff like that. I think they like really like the make stage it nice. was cool. And then for vendors, I was thinking if you guys get like right by that entrance area, that would be like prime time. Well, yeah. that's where, that's where we were at Stereo Garden. We were literally um, right at the entrance coming in, so everybody had to pass our booth. Yeah. Everybody stopped. Yeah. Everybody saw the shirt. Everyone saw the the lay lows. So at at um, the Stereo Garden and like the other ones, like from the booth, could you see the fights? Uh, Stereo Garden, no, not really. 
See, that was the one nice thing was that like we were working the booth the whole night, but we were just watching fights. Yes, you know. Yeah, it was cool. Yeah, the, the one thing like that worked uh, in and against their favor though, like same thing with the stereo garden. A lot of people that were like in that standing area were probably just watching the screen instead of the cage. And I noticed that same thing last night. A lot of people that were in the back seats, rather than looking at the cage, they were just turning around and watching it on the screen. Yeah, yeah. I was watching the screen. Yeah, because because you know what it is is like when you're le- like level with it, it's sometimes it's hard to see, especially when they go on the ground. You know, you yeah. can't see them like doing jujitsu and stuff. So it's just easier just to watch them yep. on the screen because they have like the best angle. Yeah, like when we went to the amphitheater. Yeah, day. yeah, even the amphitheater. Yeah. yeah, I mean, we paid for VIP, but we ended oh, up that was just watching horrible. the screen, and then we ended up just like going to like the cheap seats. Yeah. We, thought, we thought we were gonna have like six seats in VIP, and it was trash. Yeah, it was yeah. better though. But Stereo Garden, I like how they had that huge screen, like as the guys walk out. So like you see him walking out, and it's almost like a WWE feel, like yeah. giant, like jumbotron. Yeah. You could see like, they had that going. The sports arena too. Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah they did yeah. right. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I gotta say, man, I got it. I didn't even realize this, <clears throat> but I was talking to them. Uh, Nick and Chris after the fights last night they had a real busy year man they did nine events this year from and they, their first one was in June yeah that's oh, crazy wow. dude yeah how many are they looking to do next year do you know 12 or 13 he said nice they're, they're, he said they're definitely going to do one every month except for January they're taking January off but he's looking to do like 12 or 13 events yeah that's Sick. fucking crazy it's crazy that's so a lot of work getting all, we the, getting will be all the fighters all of them yeah, yeah, try yeah. to for sure I don't, I don't know how much I'm allowed to say but there could be some pretty big things in the works for them. I heard, I heard a couple of things. I've seen um, a little. I don't know if I'm allowed to drop it on here yet, so I won't. But there, there's potential for some really cool shit happening real Damn. soon with them. Yeah, yeah. I feel like they're gonna blow up, man. Every event that I've been to so far has progressively gotten better. Yeah, 100%. you know, they all are getting better. Like, yeah, like maybe like the event, or I'm sorry, like the location of it's not the best or ideal. Like like last night, like you were saying, like it just had a different feel. Yeah. You know, and like you walk in, you're on turf, you cut through the arcade center, you got youth basketball to the left, the fights to the right. It's kind of like, eh, like you do, it doesn't feel right. But still, when you got on the side where the fights were, like they did a good job. Yeah. yeah. You know, the lights, the stage, the seating area, you know. Yeah, the promotion's doing better and better yeah the, you know the venue might not be there yeah. but right the right the, the location better. might hold them back a little bit but the yeah. actual like production is doing a much better job yeah each time. i think easily the best produced show yeah absolutely outside of like ufc bellator mm-hmm. honestly i think that the summer one at uh the amphitheater that could have been so good yeah like if it wasn't slippery like, well i mean b- yeah besides that but like if they would have just had vendors there like right. they had one food thing you yep. know like that was a really nice place. That could have been like a potential for like a feel of like a live after five. They're going yeah. fights going on. Yeah, you they're know? going back in twenty twenty two. Nice. I you know that was their first outdoor event, and Nick told me he's like you know it's the first one, kind of a learning lesson. Of course, yeah, um, definitely. He said he's got a lot of stuff that he's gonna like clean up on it. That's so, canvas, be just awesome. canvas mats. Yeah, but a, well, a lot of well, different things. He he mentioned like the seating. He like he knew he knows that there's like. Um, <clears throat> You know they've been around for a while. They're they're starting to really figure it out. And like so, I did another show last Friday um, for another promotion upstate. It was their second event, and uh, it, they did well. But I was like, wow, what a world of difference between the two. Yeah, you can you tell know? the difference. Like even as an athlete, like I fought for a few different promotions, and then you know fighting for Nick and Chris between Flex and everything else, you can tell how good it is. And they're really committed to getting better with it because it's my first fight with them years ago to even this one and seeing kind of what they got lined up it's like a noticeable like change and like noticeable improvement and they're never like all right we're pretty good here like other promotions i've been at they were like oh we're the best in new york we're going to be good like and they never worked to evolve never really worked to get any better and look who's around now still yeah well yeah. they didn't have any competition prior there was no reason for them to evolve yeah. now it's like you know you mm-hmm. got some competition and I know a couple guys that I even spoke with they're like having fought here and then going to fight professionally somewhere else is like it felt it felt the opposite it yeah. felt like I started as a pro oh, that's mm-hmm. cool and, you know like yeah competition is good for everybody man it's good yeah. for except it's for good. podcasts <laughs> <laughs> yeah I mean I gotta say like you know um like if if I say were to fight like going last night like that was a nice show like if that was say my first fight like that would be cool like yeah. to walk out and they had like the fucking the uh, fire shooting up and shit like yeah. you know it was put together definitely. it was put together you know it wasn't just like 
you know, you see these fucking hillbillies in the middle, <laughs> middle of the backyard. I was I packed mean, out in a Sons of Italy for my first one where like you're oh fighting through God. the crowd just to walk and get into the cage. A chandelier is right above my head. I like went to stretch up and I smacked it. I'm like, oh God. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, it just goes to show you too. Look, I mean, they have, they had guys from California, from Georgia, yeah. from Pennsylvania, Tennessee. Yeah. Um, when you fought yeah. at the Paramount, they had a kid flying from fucking Ireland. Like, oh, wow. it's, yeah, they're, cool. it's not just Long Island. Yeah. Like when my, when I first started fighting for them, you were literally only fighting guys from like Long Island. I was like, dude, this sucks. Like, get it, you know. But the, the name wasn't out there now. Yeah. And I uh, Machi hopped on for one of the fights, and I was asking him questions about matchmaking and stuff. And I'm like, you know, how much work does it go into to go look and find new talent? He's like, honestly, it's getting easier. He's like, a lot of them are starting to come to us now. Yeah. Like people are seeking them out, which is awesome. Yeah. That's this, awesome. It's just a reflection of like the good promotion. Yep. You know, it's good. Yo, let's get into uh, Sock, your your fight last night, dude. Yeah. So, uh, so it was two years. You yeah. haven't been in the cage. Absolutely. Last one was uh, two years ago in October. So a little bit over that, you know, moved up a weight class for this one. And uh, what did you fight at before? Uh, lightweight, so 155, 155 was a uh, bulk of my career, and then uh, got a little hefty coming into uh, <laughs> like you know, just getting back into it. My body grew a little bit naturally, and then I was definitely carrying a little bit of uh, less than useful weight. So, so I uh, you know, tried to move up for that uh, junior welterweight, which is 165, and uh, you know, fight didn't necessarily go my way, but got it a happens. lot of good out of the bed. And you know, luckily, I didn't take too much damage, you know, little scratch under my eye, and uh. <laughs> A little bit of pain in the back of my head and my ego, but <laughs> <laughs> you also fought a middleweight. The kid was big. Dude, that man. kid was you ginormous. Fought, yeah, he was a big boy. Yeah, you essentially fought two weight classes up, honestly. Yeah, is that a day uh the day in or I'm sorry, the day of weigh ins or day, the day before. before. All right. So he day had time before. to yeah to put some weight on. Yeah. I mean, I'm not gonna make excuses for it yet. We both stepped on the scale and made the weight. He was definitely, you know, stronger. I felt as I was in a couple of the scrambles and going for a few positions, I really noticed it. Oh yeah. yeah. And you know, he hit pretty hard, but you know, I felt like, all right, I'm doing well and then I thought on a few different times between setting up going for the arm bar or like trying to stack him uh in a different position i'm like holy shit like this is a big boy like yeah size felt, matters he, when skill is equal yeah. you know or mm -hmm. close yeah. size matters that's why they have weight classes yeah that's true you, you know your jujitsu looked good last night you've, oh, been, thank you. you've been working a lot yeah i've been doing a lot of it yeah. you know uh greg depot is an absolute wizard and uh you know, he really helped me refine a lot of it and i've been working with a lot of really good guys like hugh mckenna who Consistently beats the brakes off of me. Yeah, big shout so, out to Hugh McKenna, dude, one of my old a, training partners. He's a man. He's but a beast. He's a beast. I felt pretty Thor. good with a lot of it. Yeah, the Greek god. It's basically yeah. Thor. I go with him and I'm like, oh man, here we go. But he's not Greek but, though. He's yeah, built like a Greek god. He's Viking, bro. A Viking. A Viking. <laughs> All right, Norse god. Viking, bro. <laughs> All right. All right, I'll uh, take that yeah. Greek, right? <laughs> but yeah. Um, That's racist. Lost by a submission, which kind of hurt being, you know, I was always prided in not getting submitted, but. Had some good with things that I got out of the fight, and honestly, just to break the layoff was a massive uh, thing yeah, for me. Yeah. Between you know COVID delays and then a few other things I had going on outside of fighting, yep. and then getting that all settled, I was like, "Geez, it's been you know like I said, two years and three months almost, or something like that." Where wow. it's which yeah. is a lot for you because you're you were very active prior to that. Yeah, I was yeah. going like you know three four times a year, pretty much consistently wow. from 2016. Yeah, I think so. two years and three months is a long layoff for anybody. I mean, that's a lot that you have to, you know, shake off when you get back into that ring or yeah. the octagon. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. yeah Reacclimating to competition. Like, yeah. Yeah. I felt pretty good, like, all things considered. Like, a lot of, like, bouncing the nerves. Like, a few, like, my coaches came up and they're like, you seem like you're the most calm out of everybody here. And, like, it felt good to get back. Like, one thing that I had going into this was, like, a better appreciation of the sport. Like, everything like going through the grueling training camp or like getting off after working you know an overnight and then just sleeping for an hour going to train before i can sleep again like yeah, all so these things that kind of sucked i yeah, like you sacrificed a lot for this i was fight. like you know what i appreciated the ability to even be able to do it again like as i was pretty much dying finishing my weight cut and i'm like feeling the tears start to come down my eye i'm like you know what i get to do it again though yeah. and that was like a big thing for me where it's like cool i just like i miss it it's what makes me feel alive it's what i love to do and uh, I get to do it again. So. That's so cool. Do you have any plans on uh, when your next fight's going to be? 
Um, I got to sit down and talk with Machi and uh, Nick. I know they're off January. Uh, I don't want to do February. I feel like that's just a little too close for me. Valentine's Day. I would Day. like to do... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I'd like to do March or April, definitely. I mean, this sets back a lot of my plans. The game plan was to turn pro after uh, getting this win, but I think getting back down to lightweight, competing against that, you know, one more good showing, and we'll be able to kind of make that happen. Yeah, see, I always so. thought that was like, I don't know, like I always feel like there's no like guideline to be a pro, right? Like you could just have two, three fights and be like, yeah, yeah I want to go pro tomorrow. Only some states have like mandates on like you need this number of fights, but then let's say... I don't know if it's like Illinois says you have to have five fights and do this. Cool. You just go to a state that doesn't have the rule. You turn pro and they have to let you, obviously. Right. You know, it's all up to your coaches and your team and yourself. And, you know, I trust Ryan, Brian, Greg, everybody at Lima. Like, you know, there was a reason we waited for a little while. Like when I first got there, had to kind of really become ready. Now I'm pretty much right there. All of my fights from two years ago, three years ago, and up to this, probably if you were in another state, would have been pro fights, you know, but... Most of these fights would be, man. Yeah, Since well, probably I mean, my eight, fifth fight. Eight and... Uh, yeah, you're eight and three now, right? Yeah. That's a, that's a great record. Yeah. That's, yeah. like, nothing to be ashamed of that. Right. I, no. when, I heard, when I heard the other night that you were fighting amateur, I'm like, yo, isn't he eight and two? Yeah. Like, I mean, I've heard some stories about guys that are amateur, and they have, like, a phenomenal amateur record. Like, it's, like, ten and one, or whatever it is. Mm -hmm. But they don't want to go pro. They're happy staying amateur. Yeah. You know, it's almost like they're afraid of that title. Yeah, I, I think um, it's weird because when, when I think about, you know how there's like no clearly defined criteria for belts either? It's like kind of up to the the school, the teacher, and the individual. Like, you know, maybe, maybe you have a guy that's, um, you know, 45 and a kid that's 22. Like what you expect of the 22 year old to get his purple belt and the 45 year old might be kind of different. Yeah, of I course. feel like it's kind of the same thing with fighters. You know, mm -hmm. there might be some particular thing that your coaches want you to sharpen up or looking for before they're like, all right, let's do it. It's not that you're not skilled enough. They just want you to hit this 100%. whatever mark is that well, maybe they don't have for somebody else. So if you're what? like 10 and 0 and 12 and 0 as an amateur though, don't you think that's enough to at Go that pro. point absolutely yeah absolutely so what's like I the mean, the process of from going to amateur to pro like is it just like you, as you simple talk as to being a promotion you agree on it you sign and then depending on the state you apply for the license but that's that's like literally a formality yeah. and you know like you're saying there's it's different uh skill sets for people what you expect or whatever when i first got to lima i wound up being five and oh and i think it was a major difference to like where I am now at eight and three, like my striking was pretty ass. I'm not going to lie. Like it got me by enough to rely on that. But now I feel like I'm a lot more well-rounded as an athlete where I can strike, I can still grapple. I can do all that sort of stuff. And it kind of depends on each athlete, like what pieces may be missing or develop or how strong they are at, you know, what they had. And you have, I'm sorry, get direct. No, no, go ahead. Go ahead. You have uh, you have college wrestling too, right? Correct. I wrestled D3 for, you know, four years and then coached it for a year. So nice. Yeah, so your grappling was always good. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. You know, when you look at one of the fights in particular last night, the kid Dan Bunyan. Oh, my God. That guy's a professional. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And I know I'm not trying to hate on anybody, but he doesn't even look like he's a good amateur at all, you know, the way he fought. And the criteria either doesn't exist or, you know what I mean? Like, it's that guy can be a professional. But the only thing that it, that makes him a professional is he's getting paid. Yeah. It's not his skill set. Chael Sonnen had the best quote about that. He's like, listen, for most of these places, the only difference between amateur and pro is a paycheck. Oh, like, yeah. You look at people's fights, like another great example that like a sheik, you know, he's been a, on a tear. You're seeing the same as sheik. Obviously, skill wise, he's gotten better and like developed. But, you know, he's fighting the same tough guys. And, you know, it translates over where it's fighting is fighting at a certain amount of time. Yeah. Maybe after those first couple, unless you're fighting nothing but cans, but you're going to fight. A lot of these guys that could turn pro would turn pro. That's the only difference, right? Like, I don't think mm -hmm. that your skill set is not a professional skill set. Yeah. You know, I completely agree. It's been, a, you know, I've been training for a long time and coming, but like I said, I have the utmost faith and belief in like what we're trying to accomplish at Lima. And we're trying to make sure that, you know, when I do that, like, for example, if I would have said, all right, ending the layoff, coming back, going pro right now. And then I had, you know, some stuff like this, it would have been absolutely awful. You know, or like, all right, we just want to fine tune a couple more things, get myself back down to the right weight class. I won't get as heavy as I was starting this last camp yeah. and things like that where, all right, you know, I trust everything that the coaches do. They're geniuses. They've been to, you know, the top of the mountain, if you will. You know, we've had guys get to the UFC, guys fight in the PFL finals, like people who've done it. There's a method to the madness. Yeah. And uh, yeah, I trust it. Yeah. And, you know, it sucks because I've been wanting to say I'm a professional fighter for 
shit since i was like 15 or 16 it's something i've always wanted to do but at the same time it's not worth saying i'm a professional fighter that's like oh and four because i'm having glaring holes when yeah. i turn pro it's going to be something that you know everybody's like all right shit this guy is a legitimate fighter yeah it's yeah. cool yeah no i i can't speak for anybody but in my view on it i feel like they're they know you're there and they want you like you said once you hit pro you're going to start your tear. You're not mm -hmm. going to have things to work on once you turn pro. Mm -hmm. So they want to make sure everything is perfect so that when you hit the ground, you hit the ground not just running, fucking steamrolling. Yeah. You know what I mean? You don't want to turn professional, take a bunch of losses, and be like, oh, man, I got a lot of work to do. Yeah. You know? It's kind of like the same philosophy that, yeah, uh, yeah that like Danny Stolfi has with like belt promotions. Like, he, if you're a competitor, he wants you to be a sound whatever rank you are before getting promoted to the next one. If you're killing it in tournaments as a blue belt, he wants to make sure that you are good to go so when you get into the purple belt division and competing, you're still you're, you're steamrolling. Yeah. It's like the same concept. Is that why Terrence isn't competing? Because he's not a solid white belt? Oh. Yeah. <laughs> jokes. <laughs> says, says jokes. Jokes. Dave, I trained more in the last week than you have in the last six months, my guy. <laughs> Pump the brakes, chief. <laughs> You don't come at the people's white belt like that. <laughs> the people's white belt. I love it. Yo, so what about uh, Pat Carroll last night? Oh, oh Jesus Christ. Yeah. Dude, by murder. Six. Talking about Vikings. Dude, dude. Yeah, for real. He's a Viking. That dude. Was, <laughs> I got to say, the knockout happens, right? Like, everybody starts losing their mind. I, I take my headset off to go into the cage, and I see my phone light up on the desk, and it's Nick. I just seen it. Bing bong. Bing bong. <laughs> <laughs> with like 47 yeah. exclamation points. <laughs> did you, did you, oh, you should have hit him with the, oh, did you see what his lips were saying? I, 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 <laughs> Mama. I, I text D-Rock. I said, damn, I just saw that bong city. <laughs> <laughs> bong city. Dude, that was fucking vicious. Dude, what Dude. was crazy is like, I mean, it's, it's a lot to ask two fighters to go from one style to another, right? And mm -hmm. that guy that Pat was fighting, like, he might have been a great MMA fighter, but right off the bat, I could tell he wasn't a good kickboxer. Yeah. yeah. After, like, the first shot, you're like, oh, wait, he is not taking these well. Yes. And he got his lead leg eaten yes. up by Pat's, like, left kick, yeah. left kick, left kick, and that's what set up that knockout perfectly. Yeah, 100%. Not dude. a lot of people eat Pat's shots. Well. No. <laughs> well, that's a given. The one thing that blew my mind is, like, after he got sent to the Shadow Realm and they pulled him back, you know, he gets on the mic and he's like, I'm good enough to fight. Like, you know, I can fight again right now tonight. And like a second later, he's like, yeah, wait, where are we again? No. I'm like, yes. He's like, you know, thanks to all the fans that, uh, we, we couldn't uh, where hear because D-Rock Mike was out. <laughs> Dude, that wasn't so, yeah. on me, dog. And I didn't even want to interview that guy. I didn't. Dude, I that's didn't what I said last him. night. I'm like, yo, I'm like, I'm like, Joe Rogan won't, won't interview anybody who just got knocked out. I said, here's D-Rock, who's helping the guy put his head back on his shoulders. And <laughs> yeah. Putting a microphone in the guy's face, uh -huh. dude. Yeah, I didn't want to do it. They were the in the cage, The Nick and Chris were like, oh, interview him. I was like, no, man, he just got knocked out. They're like, no, 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 interview him. I was like, bro. I give him credit, though. He was more lucid than I expected. Yeah. Minus you know. not knowing where he was when he said, yeah. you know, I'd like to thank the fans that, uh, yo, where are we at again? No, <laughs> Long Island. I can fight again tonight. I'm like, what? yeah, I don't know about that, bud. Yeah, yeah. yeah no, when but. he got when he got dropped, oh his my feet God. stayed in the air. Yeah. And I was like, it looked like when your mom was coming by with the vacuum and told you and told you to pick your feet up, dude. Look like he was holding his feet up forever, bro. It was the funniest shit. Yeah, dude. That and that was literally. As close as it can get to where where I was sitting, man. And dude, yeah, you the said the guy dropped and his face was like looking right at you. Like, <laughs> like eye level, dude, like this, looking straight at me. Eyes rolled, eyes rolled. I was like, holy shit. Dude, I wish Lifeless. I could have recorded. You should get a GoPro and just wear it. Yo, it's so funny because we said that. We <laughs> said that sick. earlier in the night. But man, he, he drops him, man. And I stood up out of my chair and I looked around. And dude, everybody, the entire crowd just was like... At all at the same time, like holy yeah. shit! Yeah. And like I look over and I see people like, and then like you know they're like yeah, they're doing like, like the Rogan yeah, like yeah. DC Dude, thing and the the they're all yeah. like the I whole had, place. It was fucking. Bomb. I wish I had like an internal camera that I could have like recorded it for. It was dope. Dude, yeah, I, that was that was a great way to end the fight. Oh, yeah. oh yeah, absolutely. You know, Did you see Rick's fucking three foot ass jump over that? <laughs> <soul? laughs> the most that I've ever seen out of that guy. That was hilarious. Pretty no, it's funny too himself. because we, you know, how we do like the live opening, like you know, you talk about the fight. We were talking about 
um, the main event, and Dan was like, you know, it's the end of the year. All these fighters want to put an exclamation point on their on their their years, and Flex wants to end on a good note, like an exclamation point to end their their year. And then Fucking Pat does that, that shit. I'm like, point. dude, you like foreshadowing like a motherfucker, you know? Yeah, Rick and I were talking earlier this week because him and Pat are like really close friends. Like Rick's the godfather of Pat's daughter. And uh, he was talking about like how it's scary, how big and how athletic he is. Like someone his size should not be able to like throw some of these kicks. Like yeah, somebody he got up there for that kick. Dude, dude also that kick his was six three. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Like, <laughs> 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 yeah, and like I, somebody said that he has to cut weight <laughs> to get to two sixty five. He's a big boy. Is that true? I think he got a little bit bigger for this one, and because he was like, "Oh, I'm gonna do a couple at heavyweight," but I don't know. Like, I didn't know how his weighing thing went. But I don't know if sure he has to do it, it all the time. I think he has before. I don't know if it's all the time, but yeah, yeah dude, he's a dude. He's a monster. <laughs> Yo, and he's so good though. Like, man, like yeah. you see him on his feet, the way he moves. Like, I remember watching him spar a couple times, dude. And I watched him spar. He came like straight off his couch like five years ago. He came to Belmore Spar and he was like literally right off the couch, dude. And I'm watching a movie. He's like slipping, rolling his head. I'm like, damn, dude, how are you this good? Like, some people he's just an have it, right? Yeah. I was in the back warming up and I'm like, thanking God I'm not a heavyweight because I'm like, God <laughs> damn, that would have been bad. Dude, and he's a scary dude, dude, too. Yeah. He's scary. Yo, but he's like a big One of the though. nicest guys yeah, in the was world. Was that ever. fight supposed to be an MMA fight? Yeah. Originally, it was, yes. right? Okay. But yeah, New York State is god awful. So. Yeah, that's what I was saying before. It's a lot to ask two guys who are preparing for a specific fight. And then go, no, 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 we're not doing MMA. You're going to do kickboxing. Yeah. yeah. Oh, Especially that was a, not a kickboxer. You know I mean? No, and he wasn't. That was a could, late switch. Like when they took the fight, it was an MMA fight. And then because in New yeah. York State, they had to swap it to kickboxing. Correct. So, so that's the first I heard. Go ahead. Crazy. Uh, so, yeah, New York State has a mandate on the minimum number of pro fights you have to have in what order else? for it to be on there. So rather than allow it you know, to continue, unfortunately, you know, a fighter got hurt. They fell below that minimum, but then additionally, because New York has extra medicals and all this other stuff they throw at you, you can't just be like, oh, yeah, I'll step in and do it. It turns out to be like a longer process to even just start getting other pro fights ready. They also have a million dollar insurance policy. Correct. Yeah. So, how, how does that work? So if they had to take out a million dollar insurance policy, obviously they're dropping more money. They're right? dropping like three to five grand a fighter, basically, for the insurance, I think. Like... Wow. That's the average cost. Because yeah, each fighter has to have $1 million. It's not yeah. $1 million for the whole event. Individually. Each fighter has to have a $1 million policy. That's fucking wow. The bananas. cost of one fight in New York is the cost or, or more than the cost of the whole card in other uh, venues, like other states. Like if you wow. went down to Florida, like one fight here would probably cost more in insurance than the entire event would down in Florida. Holy shit. But what's Damn. hilarious is like pro kickboxing. It's like, yeah, do whatever nope. you want. Yeah. The only reason like, what? The dude? only reason they care about boxing and MMA is when they were legalizing MMA, New York State was in the middle of getting sued for allowing a boxer to take a cab to the hospital after he got oh, knocked yeah. out and suffered permanent brain damage. Jeez. So they're like, "Oh shit, they're like, yo, with boxing, we definitely need this." And then, like, "Oh wait, MMA? Yeah, we're signing that in now. Like loop loop them all in on it." Yeah, New York sucks. And it just <laughs> yeah. completely ruins opportunity like you know, it's tough for even Flex to do it. I can only imagine. Like, I'm sure they would love to be pumping out a whole bunch of pro uh, fights and doing all this. But from a dollar standpoint, it's brutal. And like, you know, you got to also be able to make money. You can't just lose money to build, you know, fighters. There's a certain point where like, all right, everybody's still got to eat. Yeah, you got to feed your family. Yeah, yeah. These, these venues they, only hold so many people. Like, yeah. how are you so supposed to they recoup, doing, recoup that? They do an amazing job with what they're doing and what they've done. But another example, it's like New York just made it difficult along the whole way where it's like, all right. Something happened. Oh, well, F you guys. And it's like, come on. How do you expect promoters to be able to continue to do stuff like this when they're getting just hit in the dick every way, every part of the, along the way? Yeah, it's true. I didn't know that about the fighters either. Because last night I was like, oh, Pat's going to be fighting MMA. Rick was telling me how crazy he is. He's just like a big dude dumping yeah, people. Yeah, even just rolling around with him. With, like he's a, he's a know, bear. He's a big boy. Yeah. yeah. So then like, we see the gloves and I'm like, dude, those are boxing gloves. Like, what are we doing here? And it's like, no, it's kickboxing. I was like, that sucks. I was really hoping to see him fucking hammer fist somebody on the ground. <laughs> ground and pound. <laughs> yeah, oh, dude. Dude. <laughs> You'd watch a man's soul leave his body. It's like that thing where they're <laughs> yeah. laying flat and just... Yeah, it goes right to the front <laughs> ceiling of the building. If he followed that up, it would have been on the CTE Society <laughs> fucking Instagram. If he followed up that kick. Shout out to CTE Society. Yeah, it's a, one of the premier accounts on the ground. Yeah, that guy probably died for like 10 seconds <laughs> in that fucking <laughs> octagon, dude. Yeah, yeah. Imagine some hammer fist that capped out. Capped oh, out my off. God. oh, my <laughs> God. Dead. Speaking of uh, how much New York sucks, 
Oh, this yeah. fucking reinstated mask mandate. Yeah, Taylor's got to wear a mask. She got to. They can go the fuck themselves. <laughs> it is bullshit. Though, I am dude. not putting a fucking goddamn mask nope. on suck. ever again. Suck my dick. Kathy they can Hockle. fucking lick my asshole. So oh, I damn. heard supposedly Nassau that County. Offer if I like. Oh, oh no, that's what you, what did you would take that offer. Up? Nassau County apparently says <laughs> they're not going to be enforcing it. Really? Yeah, yeah. that's yeah. awesome. Yeah, so they're not going to enforce it, but you know. They still have to abide by it, so they're not gonna well, they're not gonna pay their police force to uh, enforce it. Basically, like right. you can't just say, "Oh no, we're not gonna listen to you," but they're not gonna enforce it. People right. can still follow it. You can still go to restaurants out there, and they're gonna be like, "Yeah, you know. it's just you're not." They're not gonna face pe- companies won't or businesses won't face penalties. Yeah, which it should be, man. It's crazy. So I heard the Patchogue Chamber of Commerce already sent out letters saying saying that they're enforcing it. No. Yeah, but no. how are they enforcing it? Like, if your business doesn't want, like, you know, like I can't say some of the places we hang out. Right. I can't yeah. say the company or the business, but somebody I know knows an, uh, an owner of a local business, and the Patro Chamber of Commerce went in there and told them the story and was like, the guy was resistant to it. I was like telling him, I was like, well, you're going to get $1,000 fines then. And if Dude, you don't, Patrick, all your employees have to wear masks. And he's like, I'm not enforcing the mask mandate. He's like, well, then you have to check everybody's vaccination status when they come in. He's like, so you're telling me I have to ask every single person that comes in to prove their vaccination status. They're like, yep, or you're going to get $1,000 fines. But see, that's not how it works either. Well, that's, the, way that, the way that I heard that it works is that for you to have a no mask restaurant or anything like that operating, you, you, need to, have, to, you have to have everybody vaccinated. All of your employees need to be vaccinated. And then you all can their, then all the guests, right? Yeah, you have to make them prove their vaccination right. status every single time. Yeah, and then if not, then it's like people have to wear masks, and that's just the way it is. But I don't think people realize how how red, or not even red. I should just say how how many people are against. How many people are not fucking retarded? Well, they're not. They're against this. I, I see yeah. so many yeah. people in Patchogue. I see so many people all over the place, and everyone's like, "Yeah, you fooled me once, dude. You're not doing it again." Yeah, mm-hmm. dude, I don't see this just, sticking on. We, no. we just went to Florida right last week. In the Florida airport, oh. you have people fucking wear, you know, wearing masks, and like I wasn't wearing a mask, right? And and then we get to New York, nobody's wearing a mask. There's like fucking people walking up and down, like no mask yeah. on. I'm like, what the fuck? I was just in Florida, and everybody's wearing a goddamn mask. You know what's crazy and though? Everybody in Florida is from another state, probably. Yeah, that's true. Right. Yeah, that's that's true. true. That is true. <laughs> it's true. <dude. laughs> I went to the Tango. <laughs> <It's so> true. <laughs> I went to the Tango it's Friday yeah. in Deer Park. Walking around. It's outside. Yeah. You know how many people I saw wearing masks? I was fucking beside myself the amount of people I saw wearing masks outside. It's ridiculous. People are like... I don't think people are going to go for it this time, man. I think everyone's Mm -hmm. pretty much fed up and had enough. Yeah, I agree with you on that. And I don't think people are going to get fooled again. I think people feel stupid. I I got people I know personally that got the vaccine and they're just like... Dude, I gotta get another one. I'm not, I did mm-hmm. my job. I got the vaccine, so I'm technically not vaccinated now. I have to get more shots. Like people are really upset about that. Dude, New Pfizer's- Mexico uh, or Albuquerque? Well, that's in New Mexico. Uh, they actually declared now you're not considered fully vaccinated unless you got the fr- uh, first booster on top of it. That's yeah. what I'm saying. It's, Dude, crazy. it's like these goalposts are gonna keep getting moved now. Like crazy. Fli- Pfizer's talking about a fourth shot now. <laughs> No, yeah, yeah. Oh it's insane. God. But it's uh, like, Lee Zeldin came out and said that, Lee. like how how it's on a like basically uh, challenging the governor Hockle or whatever the fuck her name is. Hockle, she just got appointed. No one even Which voted for her. And you're gonna come country. in and try to drop this bullshit, bullshit on us? Like I know. you didn't even win anything. I know, and like you hear all the time, man. Like the va- um, the hospitals aren't. Like, Overrun. yeah, they're not like overflowing with COVID patients. The Breeze, death toll. Breeze floor just got changed to COVID. Right. And how many patients is she really seeing? Oh, I don't know. Yeah, you do Dude, know. You're someone to Not for nothing, man. Like, also, at this point in time, like, all right, man, the vaccine came out. Now, all of a sudden, breakthrough cases, uh, booster shots. It's like, dude, what is the point of any of this? There's no, there's no logic Money. in any of Money. this. It's like, what, how, what, this doesn't make anybody fucking safer and that's no. the thing like at this point i think everybody realizes that it's not about like safety it's, it's about the coin we yeah it's, it's gotten past do. the argument where people were arguing against like people as like us who thought it was stupid because like oh it's a safety thing now it's like it's abundantly clear that it's there's nothing logically in this that is going to do it, keep you safe mask mandates don't work most yeah. of the most of the transmissions are households yeah not in these places so the mask mandates haven't done anything to keep you safe you're still getting it and transmitting it if you're vaccinated so it's like well, all this is is money and control it's yeah. not about anybody's goddamn safety anymore yep, I agree. Totally what obvious. we should do is what we do with every other disease and just let people do whatever the fuck they think is right right we don't have to be micromanaged how to take care of ourselves yeah 
yeah. did they did they like have a fucking condom mandate in the eighties with HIV? Dude. No, uh-huh. no. And you still had people like Magic Johnson playing in the NBA, full blown AIDS. And you, <laughs> Right, <laughs> full, full blown AIDS. AIDS will never not be funny to me. Because <laughs> <laughs> it's like, yo, you got what do you got? Is it, is it like it's like always the worst case scenario? Like, what's wrong, bro? I haven't been feeling good. What do you got? You got full blown AIDS. Bro? Full blown. Full blown. <laughs> <laughs> and, then then you got, and, then, and then who was it, who was just in the NBA? Um, Kyrie Irving. He couldn't even practice with his team because he's not vaccinated. Yeah, yeah. he can't. Yeah. Play, he can't play like play in, in his own home games. Right, or only, practice only at away his because he right. might get full blown COVID. Dude, know? like, come on, get the fuck out. Yeah. And I heard one person. I was just gonna say I heard one person had this new variant in New York and they're bringing back mask mandates and they yeah. weren't even fine and some guys I work with they were like yeah I think I had it and I'm like oh you didn't go and get tested they're like no he's like that's how you keep it going it's like you can't that's what they say like you can't get like HIV if you never get tested but, like, <laughs> <laughs> yeah you can't, also, get, you can't catch an STD if you don't get tested that's it the word on the Omicron thing is it's like it's way more mild yep. yeah. than Delta or whatever the first fucking gibberish Alpha. bullshit was yeah. you know it's like so what are we doing here? It's it's less like virulent. It's lower symptoms and or that, like and all the deaths are going happens. down. That's what's no one's happen dying with anymore. These, the, the death percentage is going down. If the cases might be rising, which is fine, whatever. People are going to get sick, but no one's dying anymore. It's crazy to me though. Like they came out and and publicly said that the symptoms are much more milder, but we still have to go through these shutdowns. Right. So like, how, like is that like part of their gig to see like how they could like still like control us i mean like hey listen it's not that serious but still you got to wear a mask you got to get vaccinated yeah. it's insulting at this point like how yeah. dumb do you think everybody is pretty yeah. fucking dumb oh, and by the way the vaccine that we told you you had to get it doesn't work against this one but you're taking another one now that's not different it's just another one and that'll help and you that'll yeah. work that and they work. if there was the vaccinated for it oh it's a pandemic of the unvaccinated oh okay dick face then why are all the vaccinated people fucking getting it because oh, it's, it's your fault because yeah. you're not vaccinated so yeah. dude, that's why these other vaccinated people are getting yeah, it because Terrence, you didn't what take the fuck's wrong with you damn just like you know, over the summer when I got sunburned because you didn't put any on. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh dick. my god. It's absolute insanity. Yeah, yeah we keep, we could talk about this forever. Yeah. Absolutely. And we have been talking about it forever already. I know. Right? I know. It feels it's like it's been forever. So let's talk yeah, about my bad. I was a Debbie Downer. No, let's talk about no, cool. some of these questions of the day that we let's got talk about, yesterday. Let's talk oh, about. Oh, that's right. Oh, dude, we got. I heard you guys got a bunch of questions. Got none of them. Damn, L. Well, we could talk about unsolicited dick pics, dude. Why did this pop up? I was having a conversation with somebody the other day. And we were talking about how dudes like hit on girls and they think it's like the right move oh, to. Why you gotta put me out like that? Dude, <laughs> I didn't. I was gonna, wasn't gonna say your name. We're, we're gonna blur out your name. Damn, I fucked up. Yeah, <laughs> yeah but like that's. We, we, we so actually. Hold on. We actually have a dick collage that we send out. Yeah. Wait, but we don't send it <laughs> out. Well, we. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Pete Rock's part of a dick collage that we send I out. Like how, I like how we threw you in there. Well, we, we send this out on Christmas, dude. <laughs> Speaking of that, I did... Uh, did make a Christmas wreath of cocks. Years ago. <laughs> yeah, dude. Years ago, I was at uh, my buddy's Christmas party. Fucking, That'd be fucking gross. <laughs> Dude, I was wasted at my buddy's Christmas party, and they had the you know those like little Christmas trees with the ornaments or whatever, and one was like it was like reindeer antlers. I was mangled, and I I, I took them and I got home and I fucking put them on my dick, and I sent out a fucking <laughs> I sent out a, a dick picture to every fucking person in my phone. It said "Merry Dicksmas." <laughs> <laughs> that's hilarious. Oh man. So how, how, do you, how do you guys feel about unsolicited dick pics? So you think that's a power move for somebody? Like, no, no, I, that's yeah, a scumbag a move. A scumbag, right? <laughs> yeah. Do you mean sending or receiving? Definitely sending. Sending yeah. yourself human. <laughs> you know, sh- shoot or shoot, man. You don't know until you try. Yeah, you think so? No, I'm kidding. Oh, I was about to say. Good, you know. I think if the girl's not asking for it, you can't send it. 100%. No. Like, what's wrong with you? Like, you think that's oh, going to be like... sending the girls? Oh, yeah, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Don't do it. <laughs> yeah, like, oh. <laughs> Just guys. What world do you think someone's going to be like, oh, wait, now that I've seen his dick, I definitely want to fuck him, even though I didn't ask for it whatsoever. Right. Yeah. It's like I mean, that's disgusting. What you, that's what usually happens. But. No, never. <laughs> never. I feel like my dick's so pretty, you can suck it with the lights on. You know what I'm oh, saying? Damn, dude. <laughs> Is there any like legal repercussions? Like if you send it unsolicited, could they come at you for like some kind of sleazy? Yeah. 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 No, it is pretty like, fucking sleazy though, man. If you really think about that, like, it's you're one layer removed from like just being at the bar talking to some girl, just pulling your cock out. Like, hey, what's up? Yeah, you're right. <laughs> you know you're right, I mean? dude. Wait, that's not good either. That is. A, <laughs> <laughs> that Jeez, is a solid you. move. <laughs> dude, that's not that not is a solid move. 
I have a so, feeling Remy's done this before. Because <laughs> <laughs> that's the second time he said that's a solid move, dude. Hey, he's like, taking notes like yo, you, yo, you, you send a dick pic to a girl and she didn't ask for it. He's like, that's a solid move. <laughs> it's like one step closer to being like, yo, here's my cock at a bar. That's a solid move. <laughs> that's a solid move. <laughs> the only thing solid was you in that picture. Yes, yes. yes. But, the, but like, I mean, really, if you think about it, like say you're, you know, say you met some girl, or whatever. Now you're texting or whatever, and you're just like, "Hey, what's up? How you doing? What are you doing?" Blah blah blah. And then it's just like, "Dick." Cool. That's what I'm you know saying. Like that's like being in the middle of a conversation at a bar. Like, oh yeah, you want a drink? Yeah, I want a drink. <laughs> Bang. Dick. Exactly. That's what I'm saying. It's not a good move. No. No. But people feel this like uh, an anonymity or like power being behind a phone or like the internet. It's the same thing like when you see people talk shit of, on uh, social media, yes. and then they're like keyboard warriors. Oh wait, but uh, like if someone said that in person, they'd be like, uh, uh, uh. Like someone would, well, not never, but almost never whip their dick out in public at the bar or something, but they feel like, oh, I can do this from behind the phone. Like they feel like there's no repercussions and there's nothing behind it. I agree. I agree with 100%. They don't realize they could get paid for that, too. Like, yeah. you, gotta, you could charge five bucks a picture. Go only on fans, baby. Stop. <laughs> Yo, plug it. What, what's your only fans? I don't even know what it is anymore. Oh, oh my God, God, Isn't it dude. Plumber? Plumber, G, Plumber BJJ or something like that? <laughs> uh, I'll, I'll put it. Plumber BJ. <laughs> I'll find it. Hold yeah, on. We, were having this, <laughs> we were having this discussion at work, and like, I was looking at these dudes, man. Like, some of them were young. Some of them were like early, early 20s. And I'm like, dude, like, that's how you get a girl to stop talking to you. <laughs> Like you just start chatting, you're going back, you're going back and forth in text. I said, and then all of a sudden you just send her a dick pic and she even asked for it. He's like, sometimes it works. I'm like, it's <laughs> never worked for you, bro. <laughs> sometimes. One time. I do have a friend who has, has pulled that card and, and it's worked. Mm. Unsolicited? Yeah. Nice. Now, was oh, it someone he was already like talking move. to Solid and doing move. stuff and it was out of the blue they sent it? Cause like, I feel like. I no mean, one's gonna yeah, be con- like out content, of the yeah, the content like shit if it's really someone you already hooked role. up with for a while or something, and then they wind up getting sent it, they're probably like, all right, like maybe they've already seen it and they can like look at it a little yeah, differently. Or, or but the, if it's someone you just start talking to, you do it's like, dude, what the fuck's yeah, wrong you don't with want, you? The first time somebody sees your cock, you don't want it to be on a screen, <laughs> right? And it can't be flaccid either, dude. No, no. soft dick. Yeah, but if the girls like, it's if you guys, rock if you guys are like flirting and like you get to that level, where you're like, all right, no doubt, like she's definitely gonna, you know, we're gonna do something here. I could see it then, but like you can't just be like, "Yo, what's up? You like this? I like that." I'll get Bong. back to you. I, I gotta ask him. I don't know if it was like a first text type of thing or I don't <laughs> first know, text. Still, like, that's even, the opening. Like, even still, like even a if you're going move. back and forth like sexting, and she sends like a kind of sexy picture, right? Yeah, like, claim shot, unsolicited claim shot. <laughs> yeah, but we're all right with that, dude. Yeah. I don't even like sending them to like if I'm dating the girl. I still don't even want to send you a dick pic. Because they're not paying. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> I get money for this shit. Yo, support I, local business. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, support small business Saturdays. <laughs> small, small business. Small business Saturdays. That's so funny. Small S- on both ends. Support <laughs> local businesses. Dude, we should make shirts. That should be our small. next shirt. Support small business with Luigi's OnlyFans like plug on it. It'd have to be oh, support, extra support extra small unsolicited extra dick small <laughs> That's so funny. Yeah. Yeah, I definitely, I definitely can't see that being a power move, though. No, I, I feel like that's like such a scumbag thing, and unless there's like legal repercussions, like it's like not gonna really stop as much. I mean, yeah. and I'm not a big fan of like, oh, we need the government to you know govern me harder, daddy. Yeah. But no, it's <laughs> daddy. like, but at the same time, there's got to be a line in the sand where if people are gonna act like scumbags and do that, like, all right, they got to be dealt with. Like, yeah, for sure. There's no need to go out of your way and just fucking all right, boom. And if you, oh, sorry, I was horny, or like you hear people try to make that excuse, like you see the memes are like, oh, I've been going through a lot. I'm uh, sorry, I had to deal with this. Like, I can't believe I sent that dick pic, dude. Fucking go rub one out. I don't know if you guys ever saw the Joe, Rog- the Joe Rogan uh, like stand up where he's talking about like guys when they're horny or something. He's yeah. like, dude, I, like masturbating cleared my head. He's like, yeah. they're like, ah, oh, my precious, I need to get horny, I need to get horny, and like freaking out, he's going, he's busting the butt, and you're like, oh shit. <laughs> it's like, yeah. yo, like that's not excusable as a human. Like that, no, p- that not. post not clarity. That's what yeah. they say when you're thinking about firing off like some text messages, like JJO, just jerk off and then see if you still <laughs> want to do it. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I knew I knew somebody who was like talking to this girl online, and then she asked for a dick pic, and he Googled one. That's a power move. I don't know if that's a power. That's move. not a power. Dude, move. my, my friend did that. Move. That's a beta move. My friend did that with the the like, kid that was hitting me up. Re- trying you, to wait, but you need, yeah, you need to like. 
get someone else's dick to send it to her? Like how? That's what I'm saying. Because then when she sees your dick and it's it's not going to match, yeah. she's going to put it into a side by side comparison. Yeah, right. She's not doing. No Did he know it was a real person though? Like, <laughs> yeah, that's true too. No, if he, you're no, not he, sure, oh. he thought it was a real girl. I mean, I think it still is a real girl. Like, but if still. you Facetime them, like if you get some confirmation and then you have to Google it, I'm like, eh. But like, if you're not sure, like. Is this going to be like, oh shit, it, you know, I send this picture and all of a sudden when I meet up, I'm meeting Luigi. Like, yeah, that's true. Get my that's oil true. checked. <laughs> Yo, you I'd got rather. a nice dick, dude. Uh, I Google chode and send it a chode pic. Chodes are the worst. It's a funny word, though, too. Chode, chode, I love calling people chodes and queefs. Queefs? <laughs> <laughs> Sup, chodes? Chode, chode, chode is like what? Just a small fat dick, right? It's, yeah. fa- it's fatter than it is long. Oh my God. Oh, tune can. It's like, yeah, it's like a hockey puck, dude. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> hockey puck with a mushroom tip, dude. Chode is the funniest word, though. I love it. Uh, I haven't used that in a while. That's a good... Like, you, might, you might have to bring well, it back. I'm going to have to start doing it. Yeah, bring back Chode, dude. That's your next shirt. I bring thought back Chode, Chode was also the taint. No. 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 You sure about that? Yeah, no, that's your anatomy, that's man. Gooch. No, I know that, but I'm pretty sure Chode is also a synonym for taint. And you also synonym. think the clit is on like the inner thigh, don't you? <laughs> <laughs> Wait, it's not? <laughs> I know. I know. A small taint is uh, a direct reflection of low T. Bottled water, plastic, plastic yes. bottles. Yeah, we had Nikki Vegas on, and he was he was talking about how there was a study with people who had small taints. It was a. Uh, it was on Joe Rogan. Oh, it was. Yeah. Yeah. Oh shit. They, she. There was a. Oh, that's uh, right. Environmentalist who like studies like. Uh, uh, like pl- <laughs> no, like plastic pollution. <laughs> Or, or just pollution in general and how it affects uh, our biology. And mm-hmm. she was saying that there's a co- correlation between low testosterone and the sm- like. The smaller your taint is with <laughs> low testosterone, isn't the taint just yo? And and you want to hear some funny shit? Is they haven't they actually have a tool that measures your taint? <laughs> <laughs> Wait, the taint is just like that little space in between your ass and like your balls, cock, right? Your balls, yeah. So that could fluctuate like that space. Yeah. I thought that was kind of just like whatever it is. Yeah, yeah that's what I thought too. I got Shit. a big taint. That's interesting. Well, it's good. I mean, it's going to be different. You got high T? Yeah, like, look, it's what yours. Mine. Sure. Like, they're all going to be different. I know, but I'm thinking, I would, wouldn't think, obviously, they're all going to be different, but I wouldn't think that it, would, it could fluctuate like that, just on one person. Hold up, D-Rock. D-Rock G got us some. Showed the sh- a short, fat penis that's wider than it's longer. The area between the scrotum, vagina, and the anus. It oh, is also wow. the taint. Oh, dude. Shit. D-Rock's like, according Impressive, to the dude. Urban Dictionary post that I just made, it says this. <laughs> <laughs> nah, dude. It's, it, it came up on Google. Damn, so it's gotta it's be legit. legit. It's legit, dude. Shit's a fish, son. Dude. It's on Wikipedia. So lick my fucking chode, baby. <laughs> <laughs> which, which one? Which one? <laughs> <laughs> both. Both, 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 both of them. I almost just spit my drink out. <laughs> my bad. <laughs> so lick my fucking chode, baby. <laughs> oh, Lord. Oh, my fuck. favorite podcast. Yeah. 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 Two jits and tits. Yo. Big shout out to the fucking Nikki Cowboy, dude. I know. Yeah, that guy's, Yo, that guy's chode is huge. <laughs> it's probably huge, dude. He's jacked. Dude, I can't believe that guy's out there in like the cold in just like tidy whities and cowboy boots. Just yeah, chilling. but you can't you can't forget about the jits and tits stickers on his nipples. Yeah, that's <laughs> amazing. Them Those are keeping him warm. How many unsolicited dick pics has that guy fired off in his life? Oh. I mean, how many do you think he got, dude? Yo, do you think women like come to New York like trying to take down the Nikki Cowboy? Be like, yo, I'm gonna, yeah. I'm gonna fuck this guy. Like there's he definitely he definitely there's slays. Yeah. Right? There, there's dude, an, there's an ass for every seat, baby. Yeah. Yeah. Killers get married in prison and shit. They get fans. I can't Dude, see the naked cowboy. Bl- that always blew yeah. my oh, mind. And it was like a young, yeah. attractive woman who married uh, Charles Manson. Dude, that always blew my mind. Dudes are locked up for like twenty five years to life, and they get married. Dude, people Crazy. are fucking sick. That like that's what you're into. Like you can't even like meet this person. You're just a pen pal with them, and you get married to Dude, them. Dude, it's so gonna hang out, get railed out on a conjugal work. visit. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's that's wild that they allow that like conjugal visits or whatever. I, are they just trying to cut cut down on like butt rape and shit? Like I don't know. <laughs> yeah. Like you're in prison. Like I feel like whatever crime you committed, you you got to give it, give up uh, sex until you get out. Yeah. I mean, unless you're doing it. Yeah, doing it. Right. <laughs> I think that's probably yeah, speak a part for of the, yourself on that one. <laughs> part of the rehabilitation side of prison. Prison, I guess, or they're like, all right, we'll kind of let you be a human if you're not a complete scumbag. But I don't remember I don't where know. I listened to it, but there's um, there's this guy describing how they make like pocket pussies in prison. Like there's like a whole oh like what? like like latex gloves and like yeah, it's a glove and um yeah Luigi's it. <laughs> yeah, Luigi made the bad. video. He wrote the <laughs> book on it. He's like, yo, that flashlight is way too expensive. <laughs> Let, oh, me see, let me see about a, a D, uh, DIY how to make a fucking yeah, yeah. sponge. It, yeah, sponge. It, it's, it's, it's a sponge. It's two, sponges, <laughs> two sponges with a, with a rubber glove yeah. wrapped around them, and they're usually inside like a uh, all masturbation's DIY a, bo- like yeah. a bottle or a cup a or bottle, something. Bottle, cup, or like a um, can. 
like a paper towel fucking <laughs> roll or something like that. Damn, Damn you should make look it just some tits pocket pussy. Damn. Damn. Oh, it's so yo, it's like Terrence's. <laughs> some of the, some of the, <laughs> yo some of the ladies though yesterday at the fights were talking about some. Uh, Jits and tits female gear, dude. They want some crop tops. Like dildos? They oh, want really? some one piece. <laughs> <laughs> like dildos. Remy's on fire <laughs> with the hot takes tonight. <laughs> <laughs> he's just had, he's it's only a solid had input move. about dicks. Yeah. Solid, move. <laughs> yeah. solid move. Solid move. Solid move. That's, that's, that's he's a solid into, move. He's into solid things. That's a solid Wait, so, move. W- I didn't hear about this. Tell yeah. me, tell Jits me about this. Crop yeah, they want some like crop tops. What chicks were saying this? They want free the nipple shirts. Uh, I don't know a couple Solid chicks, move. a couple chicks that were like by the booth and stuff. That's cool. What day is like free the nip day? Maybe get a little uh, every day, baby. Well, every day. Amen every, to that. But every isn't day. there like a point where they always like a one week they go all full blown empowerment oh, towards I, it? I know what you're talking about. Like yeah, something along those lines. Oh, there's, there's like, like a whole free bleeders. Yeah, there's like a march. Oh, it's yeah. so yeah. gross, bro. Let's <laughs> be wearing like gray sweatpants. It's, it's none of the ones you want to see. Wait, though. wait, wait. The ones that go marching and like with their tits out and everything. They're not anyone that you, you want to really see. Right, hold up. They're hold basically up. a knee in their tits every step. <laughs> He's not holding it up. Yeah, yeah, hold up, hold up, hold, hold, hold the phone. So they, Dave just said free bleeders, yeah, and I go, yo, it, that's gross. There's women who, like, they refuse to use, like, you know, tampons or, like, any of the alternatives for that, and they'll wear pants <laughs> and just let the blood drip down their leg and, Are like, walk around, and walk around with pride, like a red badge of honor. Are you serious? Oh, yeah, as you said that, Nick took the biggest deep breath. Like, <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, it's wild. What the fuck is wrong Dude, with these like, hoes? listen, like, I'm all for like not shaving your pits. Like, you want to do that? Whoa, whoa, whoa. I'd rather Dude, see a not a solid the fucking. Yeah, listen, that's that's, that's your prerogative, yo. Solid. You want yeah. HP? <laughs> <laughs> but like, I mean, come on, like, that's really what they do? Yeah, it's, it's, a, it's a, a thing. Patriotic it's it's a real, it's a real thing. Yeah. yeah. Oh yeah. That's the. I understand wanting to empower yourself. You know, all for be you. But at this point in time, like, <laughs> what are you getting out of just bleeding through your clothes? You're standing up to the patriarchy, dog. That's what I'm saying. You get, now you got to go, buy, you you know go buy new clothes, dude. I, that's a solid move. That's a solid, that's a solid move. move. I'd, I'd rather see liquid. that than Harry Pitts, though. What? No, what? Really? Harry Pitts is such a turnoff. Dude, so is, <laughs> <laughs> is bleeding <laughs> down. Is his blood down like their whole pants yeah, like, to turn you, on? You don't have to worry about getting pregnant or nothing like that. Oh, my God. Can, <laughs> Luigi. Dude, you can still get pregnant when you're... Yeah, yeah you can, right? Uh, I don't think you can. Uh, you, you, can. you can't get pregnant. On your period? period? On your period, no. Yeah, you can. You sure? I think you can. Yes, you can. We you just can. got confirmation from <laughs> Jill. <laughs> we just yeah, got confirmation from Jill. I'm pretty Thanks, sure you can. I'm pretty sure you can. Thanks, Jill. Because Jamie. You can only get pregnant when you're ovulating. Mm. No, no, you, mm. I'm going to mm. listen to the one person in the room that has... Uh, Experience. A little bit of yeah. experience. Oh, Terrence so. got a pussy. Hold on. Whoa. Hey, yo. My yo, bad. Wait. My bad. My bad. D Rock, pull it up. You I heard that, up. you fucker. <laughs> D Rock, pull up another article that you made that says it. No, I, I think uh, I think you still can, though. Yeah, but. Definitely. Yeah. Live and let live. You know, I'm all a fan oh, of it, you but go. that doesn't mean I got to enjoy it. Here oh, you go. Yes, a girl can get pregnant during her period. Is, oh, that, read, is that all it says? Read, read the rest of that, though. There's, there's got to be more. How just, likely just the likelihood we get pregnant to in one to two days after starting it is nearly zero, but not zero. The likelihood increases with each successive day, even if she's still bleeding. Wow. At roughly 13 days after starting the period, the pregnancy is estimated at uh, 9%. So yes. yes, yes. So it's you got a fucking better chance of dying of COVID, and no one does that either. So <laughs> <laughs> you're good. Hot take, Louis. Oh, that's hot, too much. Hot dude. takes podcast. That's too much. Are you still looking it up, D-Rock? I'm just reading what it's saying because obviously women's ovulation varies, right? Yeah. But you you can only get pregnant when you're ovulating. So if you have a screwed up ovulation cycle where you're like where starting you're to ovulating. ovulate at the end of your cycle, then yes, it is possible. But it's like real low percentage. It's almost like less probable, like we said like yeah. two minutes ago. Do, you that? Uh, do he ask no, me? I know. No, I didn't know. I didn't know. No. Learn something new every day. You do. That's, Listen, that's, that's two facts. in a row. I was also right about the chode and pregnancy. So I'm basically go. a doctor. Basically a doctor, <laughs> dude. And I'm going to give you some unsolicited medical advice. Better than a dick pic. Don't, exactly. <laughs> 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 no, this is my unsolicited medical advice. Go fuck yourself. <laughs> Don't do that, dude. Don't do that. My bad, my bad. Oh. Oh, my God. <laughs> Back on. Wait, what's, what was that? <laughs> My belt, belt, it's like off. a little ratchet thing. Uh, oh, I thought you grabbed something else out of there. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Click, click, boom. I don't know why, but yeah. this just, we were talking about the unsolicited dick, pic, dick pics and how it's a bad move. Like, what's, um, what's like the hardest L you've ever taken? Like, where you just made yourself foolish, like trying to get a chick? 
Oh damn! I took an L last night. I could tell you that. <laughs> it wasn't. It wasn't. It wasn't. It wasn't with the chick, but I was uh, pissing and ripping the old vape ski bop in the bathroom. <laughs> vape ski bop. I went. To, I went to the little like jewel thing. Oh. So. I went to slide it into like my pocket on the inside of my like suit jacket and it slipped so I see it falling right towards the bowl <laughs> so I swat it but as I swat as I swat it I also swat my dick and like piss all over the wall <laughs> <laughs> but, <laughs> and I was like, damn, this is an L right here. <laughs> it's almost as good as you're losing your teeth off the building. Oh, man. <laughs> that is too much. That cop, bro. <laughs> <laughs> this guy That is too Terrence funny must be packing a heater son He smacks ah. his own dick I thought you were gonna be In a, in a stall And like smack the guy's I ass Next to you or something <laughs> That's what I thought Dude that is fucking oh hilarious Why'd you <laughs> I'm glad so you saved that For the podcast I was dude. gonna tell you that thing And I'm like nah I'll wait till we're I'm on I'm upset air for it this. took this long For you to say Dude yeah. that is fucking hilarious well, I forgot about it Until you started saying the L's Because like I say <laughs> Dude all the, all the time Like I'll go and do something And I'll feel myself Getting swept or something And jits And I'll be like L And I say I say it out loud <laughs> L L. So like whenever like some shit happens to oh, me, I'm just that, like L. Is that I, how you always say that? Oh, uh, Remy, I don't think I've ever said that to you. Dog. <laughs> <laughs> I don't. I don't. I can't remember a, a big L I took with a girl, but recently, like probably two years ago, I was at a job site, and I I usually buy my own safety glasses because they they look better, and they I don't know the ones that we get are like real dorky and shit. Mm-hmm. And I went to take a piss in a porta potty, and I had like a couple layers on. I bend over to grab like my like my layers, like my thermals and shit, and my safety glasses fall off like the top of my head right into the blue water of the fucking pool. Oh, oh, that's horrible. Damn. Now, do you pick them up or leave them? I definitely picked them up. <laughs> Put <laughs> them right cleaned back them on. Up, cleaned them off. <laughs> yeah. It was good. They, you, they were expensive, bro. I had to. Had to. That's like that blue shit in the really? porta potty. No, I didn't. <laughs> oh, 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 <laughs> solid, solid, solid move. move. <laughs> solid, move. <laughs> solid move, dude. Solid move. I was move. gonna say that shit is nasty. Fuck that. Yeah, dude. Sometimes you go in those porta potties, it's like a goddamn pyramid of shit. I know. That's oh. nasty. Would you for a million dollars? No. No. <laughs> no. No. Keep I love your head inside the porta potty for a whole job like a whole job day for, for seven hours. For a million what? dollars. Oh yeah, of course. I should have listened. Wait, what? I should have listened to the whole question. Just put your head in the bowl. In the, but so you're not. You're not. You ever go in the porta potty? Yeah. Ever, all right. So have your <laughs> just your head. I don't know. D Rock fucking works at a school. Says, you yeah. Of course, I've been in the porta potty. Dude. Stick your head in the in the porta potty portion, portion where like people are shitting. Is your head, head getting in wet for a full work day? For eight I don't know, hours? People are shitting no. and pissing on you for, for oh, seven hours. Oh, you have you have to sit there while people in, come in and shit and piss on you. Yeah, I thought, you got like hell dollars. No, no, no way. No, dude. No. You would. I don't know, maybe. <laughs> oh, yeah, you you want to get pissed on and shit on for eight hours for a million dollars? That's I mean, more I'll, than I'll, I'll be a millionaire at the end of it, so who cares? Yeah, yeah, I could buy soap. No, <laughs> I would never. No, you, you're I don't think so. Them. There's a lot, lot of therapy. There's after a that. lot of things That's that I would one. do for a million dollars, but I'm not getting shit and pissed on as well. Nah. Who not a small for job site with only like four people? Definitely not. No. No yeah, way. No. I, I mean, if they're not going to go in there and shit and press on me, if they're just going like, to handle their business outside, well, maybe I consider it. Yo, yo, I'm in here for a million go. <laughs> yeah, yeah, they open the door. Yo, it's closed. Uh, yeah, I would, just, I would just lock the door. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's what you would do. So when every time someone came up to the porta potty, it was red. Yeah. Like someone was in there. Yeah. Yeah, I would never do that. There's no. a lot of things I would do for a million, but getting shit and pissed on is not yeah, one. Maybe once, not fucking for seven, eight hours. You know, like. No, hell no. Yeah, that's rough. Fuck no. Um, I don't know if I can do that. I got a good L that Definitely I took not. years ago. I was probably like 19, uh, short, fat, and there was this girl who I thought was like kind of into me, but I couldn't, I didn't really know for sure, and she was a little bit... <laughs> <laughs> Stampede. That's an L. That's an L. Stampede. <laughs> That was awesome. <laughs> uh, Here it comes around too. <laughs> they come again. Yo, uh, dog oh stampede God. going on in the in the God. house. So, what was your question? Um, your anyway, I, I thought this girl was like flirt with me, or whatever, and uh, she was just bigger than I was. That, like, cause I, didn't, <laughs> dude, I, didn't, I didn't grow till I was like fucking nineteen years old. So I was like still short and tiny and shit. And this girl was bigger than me. And I thought like my idea of flirting with her was like you know kindergarten shit. Still like 
somebody to go pick her up like I was going to throw over my shoulders and run off of there I oh picked her up dude God. and fell clean over oh my <laughs> 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 I literally crumbled like the uh, videos you see the kids fail deadlifting that was me this bitch fell right on top of me bad like, move bad move bad move <laughs> on top of me still and she's like the fuck are you doing <laughs> I was like um nothing <laughs> You're squashed underneath her. Yeah, yeah, it was not a good was look. This uh, moment, he that's knew. That's so funny. <laughs> Fucked up. Yeah, it was a, that was real embarrassing. That's very funny. And how old were you? I think I was like 19. Oh my oh, god! Yeah. <laughs> I think when, around this, I was like 19, 20. I was hanging out. I, I the girl wasn't hit on me. She was hit on my cousin. who was a fat chick, <laughs> and she's like hitting on him all night. And he's we're talking about it. It's like at a house party. We're talking about it in the driveway. I go to him, I'm like, dude, what's the big deal? I'm like, you could probably just get head from her. Like, she's a fat chick. It'll be the best head you ever had. She comes out of the bushes and starts fucking like yelling and screaming at me. Like, what was she doing in the bushes? Dude, no, fu- no fucking she, idea. She knew there was probably. shit talking probably- going on. And I mean, it didn't help my cousin out, but. Of you know, course not. <laughs> of course not. <laughs> that was probably the biggest hell I took with her. Whatever. Oh, but that wasn't even a bad L for you, bro. It was for your cousin. No, it was just you were yeah. you were a shitty wingman. I yeah, yeah. That, that I, was, I don't that think was I was bad. an L because something tells me you weren't embarrassed or upset about it. Yeah, at that time I kind of was. Really, I, I was young. You. I was young. I didn't. I was young, naive. I didn't really know too much. I had a heart back then. <laughs> I can't. No, I didn't grow a heart till about six years ago. <laughs> six D- years ago, D Rock made sure of that. <laughs> That's too funny. Yo, Luigi, you ever been in a porta potty? Yeah, I work on job sites. <laughs> oh my god! Dude, dude, when, have, when have you needed to go in a porta potty though? A lot of five. Yeah, dude. It's like, what do oh, you there mean? you go. Festival. Oh, right. Yeah, right. that makes sense. Bang. They're not only on job sites, Bang. dude. Like, yeah, but most of the time, I mean, yeah, most, of the time most, you have a, most of the time they are. But there's yeah. porta potties. And I used to work. Yeah. I used to do manual labor jobs, dude. Yeah, like, but you did them in like buildings and shit, no? No, there's a landscaper for years. <laughs> yeah, he's told this story. You You shit in the bushes. Yeah, so what makes you think I haven't seen a porta potty? <laughs> <laughs> I shit in a cinder block, dude. That's a stacked up two cinder oh blocks. Oh my god! Did you really? Yeah, because dude, oh I, my god. it was perfect because because I, I could I was it's still able perfect. to I was it's still able perfect. to sit right. I was able to bend enough to be comfortable, <laughs> and then it's got like the three little holes. So it was just shit went right through through the hole. That is fucking <laughs> hilarious. Yeah, I can't believe you did that. Yeah. You took Yo, the time out to stop. I mean, stack they were right there, blocks. so I just stacked them. That's so one funny. time <laughs> we were working in the city, and we were in this house, and none of the bathrooms worked. And this guy went to shit like in a in a bucket, and I guess he didn't realize the bucket was smaller than a toilet, so his dick was out of the bucket. So when he shit, he was pissing too. So he pissed all over his pants. <laughs> he comes downstairs and his pants are like fucking soaking wet. We're like what the fuck happened? And he looks, he goes, "Holy shit!" He I guess he didn't realize that like his dick wasn't in the fucking. That was Terrence last week when he came back from the bathroom. Yo, that was <laughs> The, but the guy didn't even realize he pissed like pissed on his pants till like after That's we funny. saw him. That's fucked up, dude. That's he funny. must have been drunk because everybody knows that when you shit, you always piss. Well, yeah, Do- doesn't well, matter. Doesn't matter if you just took the longest piss before shitting, you still piss. Oh, I don't right? think. No, I don't think he realized that like how small the um the spackle bucket actually was that his dick was like outside of it. That's hilarious. How do you not know? How do you not have yeah, situational like, I, I awareness? Like, <laughs> I, just, I don't know. The guy comes downstairs from the <laughs> second floor. He's got piss all over himself. How do you I'm not like, what the have fuck the situational piss? awareness? <laughs> was he that fat where you couldn't he couldn't see his own dick? Yeah, was no, he a big I mean, dude? It was the middle of winter. Maybe old clothes. I don't know. It is. It is hard, dude. With 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 layers trying to go to the bathroom. Yeah. I I gotta say yeah. though, like it is sometimes like uh, when I go hunting and I have a lot of layers on, and I like you know I unzip my pants and I, I take a piss in the woods and I like literally can't physically see my dick. I'm like, oh my god, like this must fucking suck. Yeah, dude. <laughs> like, like, well, what about like, fat? Or what about in the middle of winter when you have layers on and you have to take a piss so bad and it takes you like 45 seconds to get, your to, dick get out? to your dick? Yeah, the worst. You're z- unzipping it's like two you're- layers of pants. You're, like you're fishing around the thermals. You're pushing everything. Around like oh there it is and then you get there and your hands are fucking icicles oh yeah and it just goes i gotta take i gotta take all the layers off or else it's too thick and i'll actually piss on the layers like my (laughs) dick is so little that it's gotta you just you're gonna pee on your balls yeah i hear that yeah i can get behind that all right so question of the day all right your favorite food what's your favorite food can you think of one that you love sushi sushi i knew that was that was it all right so whatever your favorite food is right you either give that favorite food up or you give up getting head. 
Not giving head, Luigi. <laughs> Getting it. Hmm. Uh, there's a lot of foods I like. I can live yeah. without one of them. I'll find a new favorite. <laughs> yeah. I can, like, I can eat steak. Like, yeah, but you love yeah. sushi, though, yeah, dude. I, I, I yeah, can I'll eat steak or meat. Yeah. 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 <laughs> Are we giving this up forever? For sure. For sure. Yeah. Now, do you, do you like, do I get my dick sucked more for giving it up? Is it like a reward system? Yeah, is there like a, is there yeah. a balancing act? Not that it matters because I'm giving up the food. Yeah. There's no yeah. question yeah. about it. Yeah, no, no. Just, I'm definitely giving up the food. Just yeah. the amount of times that you get oral now. Yeah, I'm giving. I'm still giving up the sushi. I'll find yeah. steak yeah. or fucking meatballs or something yeah. like that. Yeah. Yeah. Chicken yeah. French cheese sounds pretty good after getting it. <laughs> yeah. If zero is still you know zero, then I'm going to just eat the vodka. You know what's really good after a blowjob? Steak. Steak. Everything else is but your favorite food still tastes pretty good. Yes. Dick isn't that um, Cheerios? Isn't there like a National Steak and Blowjob Day? There yeah, is a, a no, month after Valentine's not. Day. Yeah, I think that, yeah. I think it's like a month after 14th. Valentine's Day. Are you serious? Yeah, steak yeah. and Blowjob, dude. I'm learning a lot in this podcast, dude. So. <laughs> See, we're we're an informational Education podcast. You're informative, dude. I'm gonna text Bree right Put now. Put this on Pornhub. Put Damn. that on the calendar. Put that. Yeah, I'm with D-Rock, man. I don't think I have a favorite food. I like a lot of foods. I like a lot of different foods. Yeah, so I'm good with like giving something up that I like because yeah, yeah. there's going to be a shit ton more. What would I, it be? What would you give up? What would be my favorite? Like, I, don't, I don't know if I have a favorite food. Well, I'll just eat bread for the rest of my fucking life. Dude, that's what I'm saying. Sometimes, dude, sometimes, yeah. sometimes, every food. sometimes Italian bread with butter is like the best thing on the, yeah. on the planet. It depends on the mood I'm in at times. Like, yeah. yeah. I, mean, I would say the thing that I frequent, like that's probably always the most consistent. Steak tacos from Tap Room. Bodega Oof. food. Pizza, right? Like yeah. pizza's always I bomb and shit. So like, it's like a comfort food, right? Yeah, like, and like I could also eat pizza. Like if if you had to ask me like the other question, like you could only eat one thing for the rest of your life, I'd be content with pizza because uh, there's I love pizza. It's always Absolutely. good. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like I don't I don't know if I'd be able to eat like steak every day for the rest of my life. Yeah. So. Um, so pizza but, might be like your, your pizza might be it. Like, I think like, be if I never had another piece, slice of pizza the rest of my life, and I can still get my dick sucked. No question. No question asked. No question. I'll nope. put fucking marinara on my dick. <laughs> <laughs> and suck it himself so he yeah. can the pizza. So it's like pizza. Sausage slice. Oh, my God, dude. So yeah, like I, I, definitely, I definitely don't have a favorite food, so I'd be good with uh -huh. just giving up whatever. Yeah. I That's love some pizza, but... You can give it up. Yeah. Yeah. It'll be tough at first, but you get used to it. Shit, yeah. I gave it up for a while during camp. I mean, think about this. What's the rest this. of my life? If you had to give up blowjobs, like, what... What are you doing? You know what I'm saying? Like, so you start hooking up with some chick, and it's like, sorry, you can't suck it. So I'm just gonna hang out. Over here. <laughs> that's true. That'd you be know awkward. You do? Like, are right, you just gonna give me a handy for fucking? Oh god, yeah, yeah, no, thanks. Yo, that's the other, that's the other side no, of the thanks. question, I don't want dude. Fucking, right? Uh, yeah. How do you? Have, you got to explain that. Yeah, like talk dirty to me while you jerk it. Yeah. <laughs> She goes down and you're like, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. I love yeah, pizza like, way too yeah. much. <laughs> you I step off her off. You got to explain to her, like, wait, what? What? You Dude, don't want this? I, I do, but I, I like pizza a lot. Yeah. Pizza's like my number one. I mean, there is a whole lot of other things you could do, but, you know. Yeah, there's a lot of things not, that you not, can do, Luigi. That is true. <laughs> that is true. Oh, I'm sorry, I don't have boring sex. I don't know. But it's... <laughs> But I mean, guys, I'm still, I'm still not lived. giving. I'm still not giving up sushi. I mean, I'm still not giving up. <laughs> I'm still not giving up sushi. Yeah, the truth friend. came out, dude. The truth still came out. No, I'm giving up. I'm giving up sushi for blowjobs, 100. percent Yeah, I would figure you would. Yeah. Terrence, did you hear the question? Terrence is keeping his favorite food. So whatever favorite food you have, whatever you love, you either give it up for blowjobs or. You keep the food and never get a blowjob. You could still have sex, though? Yeah. Uh, I'd probably keep the blowjobs. Yeah? Yeah. No question asked? No, we can get... like. There's plenty of shit. That I love food, so... As long as there's no onions, I could eat something. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you don't like onions, If dude. I had to eat, like, an onion... A full onion or give up blowjobs for the rest of my life, I'd probably just give them up. <laughs> <laughs> Are you serious? Yeah, I Yo, fucking hate hates onions. onions, onions they make me they actually, I might have to be, I might have to agree with you on that one. You I, hate onions too? I hate onions that Damn. much. Too. I hate onions too, but I'll eat fucking a hundred onions. <laughs> <laughs> I like onions. I like like raw, like yeah. raw onions on my glizzy. So People good. love them and they don't understand. Like in like Luigi and I like understand like how bad it is. Like how much so we, how much we hate them. I know people love them and then they'll be like. Yeah, they don't. I, they don't I, even taste like anything. It's like, well, if they don't taste like anything, they taste like they taste then, like they taste like onion. Then why the fuck I don't do you like put onions, them in everything? But I love onion rings. Is that weird? <laughs> that nah, is, I'm the same way. That yeah. is weird, though. That is weird. I, I think it's just covered in fried batter. Yeah. Like it doesn't even have any flavor anymore. You ever have liver? No. Yeah. Oh, liver is gross, gross. dude. Yeah. That's like that's probably like my equivalent yep. to like 
Terrence's onion thing. Liverwurst is disgusting. It's like I grew, spreadable I grew liver. up on liverwurst. Yeah, that's liverwurst horrible. Liverwurst is Brie likes that shit. It's fucking disgusting. It yeah, smells it's like, it's so like an old bad. guinea thing Ugh. though, man. Like my my mom used to get liverwurst all the time. Liverwurst and bologna. Bologna's not bad, dude. About head cheese. Gross. I don't think it's on like the I don't same know what level. That is. Oh, dude, it's the most disgusting shit in the world. It's like the um, head cheese is a bunch of different meats. Yeah, it's like the uh, and, hot dog of the cold cut. It's like the wait, cold, so why hot dog it, of the cold cut world. Why they call it cheese then? I have no fucking <clears> idea. Because it's because they make it into like a, like a block and they slice it like cheese. Okay, that's great. It's like it's all different meats like put together with like gelatin. Like oh yeah, it sounds it's horrible. Gross. It sounds it's awful. When I was when I was young, I got in trouble, and my aunt who like took custody of me, like my punishment was to eat. A, a liver I don't even know Where it was from Cow or whatever It was a huge Fucking piece of meat She didn't like Cook it with any Onion seasoning Nothing Threw it in the frying pan Cooked that thing up Like extra extra Well done oh. And I had to finish The whole thing dude I couldn't even eat it I kept gagging And like spitting it up And then I don't know what happened There was like a breakthrough Like the skies opened up dude And they were like Just cut into small pieces And swallow it <laughs> like a pill So I fucking cut this thing up And I just drank it with water The whole time <laughs> Little cube, swallow it like a pill. Oh. Little, I didn't even chew it, dude. Uh-huh. That's a good idea. Constipated for 14 days afterwards. <laughs> <laughs> I haven't shit since. <laughs> I was 12. I'm 40-something I'm still, now. I I'm, still, shit. I'm still digesting that liver, dude. The day the day after that was probably the healthiest you ever were. Yeah, yeah. you think so? Yeah. It was gross. There's so many nutrients in so, the liver. Oh my it's God. just like... Even still. when you cook it, like super, yeah. super well done. Yeah. Dude, you, I couldn't even chew it. That's how rubbery it was, yeah. dude. Your it body was, can break it down. You just can't. I can't now. And that wasn't a punishment. That it, was just dinner. Yeah, that was a punishment. Oh, it was a punishment. You yeah, because everybody else like ate chicken parm that night. And there I had like oh. this brown piece of meat <laughs> on a plate. What would you do to deserve that? I don't even remember, dude. You remember. I don't. <laughs> I wish I did. He blacked it out. He's just the over yeah. the trauma of this liver. That dude, he, 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 yeah. he was 14 years old, sent an unsolicited dick, dick pic. pic. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> and it was flaccid. <laughs> it that, was a, that's why. So it that's was a softy. Why, it, it was, was yeah. not a solid move. It was a softy. It was a soft. That move. was a soft. Move. Yeah, and that was before digital pictures, so you had to bring that thing to like CVS and I had to print out your cop Polaroid, shots. Polaroid. 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 Yo, oh, s- speaking of that, the other day when I was flying home, like the like to go through the um, the gates and everything, you know how you got to take some shit out of your bag and stuff. So I have the um, whatever the fuck it's called, the like VI- VIP thing where you go through and you don't have to like take your shoes Pre-check. off. And stuff. Pre-check. Thank you. And um, <clears throat> the the guys like. Uh, I was like, oh, do I have to take my camera out of the bag? And he's like, camera? And he looks at me. And I'm like, yeah, camera. I'm like, you know, you take fucking pictures. <laughs> and he's never heard of them. And he's like, he's like, uh, he goes, is it film or digital? I'm like, film, dude? <laughs> Who the fuck? <laughs> I'm like, do they even make that shit anymore? That I'm is like, hilarious. It's fucking digital. How like, old was this guy? He was like, uh, like in his like 30s or something, like, oh y- like younger-ish. You know, but he, film or digital? Yeah, like he he was like ca- camera, and he looked at me like with a weird face, like he was confused. And I'm like, yeah, camera, take pictures, you know. Amazing. And he's like, oh, is it film or digital? I'm like, I, I really felt like being like, dude, have you ever, in the amount of time you've worked here, ever had anyone come with a fucking film camera? Dude, that's hilarious. That's fucking hilarious. Like, when's the last time they stopped making film cameras? Oh, I Tommy no. D has one. Yeah, some people who are really into Tommy photography D. still do like the old yeah, school. Yeah, but Tommy's a really. dedicated but hipster. That's what I'm yeah. saying. Like. Like unless you're a photographer who is like loves that shit, like nobody uses film. No, yeah, but he could he, he could have thought you were a photographer going down for a wedding or something like that. Yeah, know? but I feel like but even photographers, that's what I'm like, saying. a like, lot of them still use digital. Yeah, yeah, it's like most. Like, like he said, you have to be like in love with it. Like yeah, you, you still have, have to, to have like a tube TV at your house to be using film. Yeah, and, right, and and you have to do, use a typewriter. <laughs> 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 and you still have to use a typewriter. And yeah. an abacus for your math. <laughs> no, Yo, but abacuses are sick. But like yeah. regular Rolodex regular cameras, they don't make fucking film <laughs> Bro, anymore. No. Rolodex, speaking of which, I <laughs> my uh <clears throat> my old roommate Chris, his girlfriend, she's I think she's twenty nine or something like that. I remember how the conversation came up, but I I said Rolodex and she was like, What's a Rolodex? I was like, Are you serious? She's like, Yeah. What's a Rolodex? You know what Rolodex is? It's like no. the thing where you put like Holy business shit. cards and like contact information you flip through. It's like al- oh, alphabetical oh. order and it's just, okay. it's just like a little like phone book. Yeah. yeah I didn't know what it was called, but yeah, I know what that is. Yeah, that fucked me up. I was like, damn, I'm that old. These yeah. girls don't even know what a Rolodex is. Yeah. When I when I was working, I had somebody say like, uh, oh yeah, you know what, dirty old bastard? 
And I'm like, old dirty bastard, bro? And he's like, yeah, yeah. You know, he was making money and, and he wasn't paying his child support. And I'm like, dude, I grew up with old dirty bastard, bro. Like, of course, I know who the fuck he is, dude. But dirty old bastard? I'm like, wow, man. Fucking kid's young. How old? He was like 20. Loser. Like, yeah, dude, come on. Everybody knows who fucking... ODB. Oh, yeah. Fucking retards. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so get your weight and not your hate up. I'm way in. Hope you're ready. Buckle in. Let's see what you got. So I don't know why, but I feel like reels like are popping up left and right. People on Instagram are decorating their bedrooms for these holidays. And like they still live they still live at home with their parents. Like, what are you doing? Bothers me so much. They like walk around their room, they show like the Christmas trees in the corner, the lights hanging in their bedroom and shit. And it's like, yo, like you don't even own the house. What are you decorating your room for? So what bothers you more? The fact that they're decorating the room or that they just still live with their parents? <laughs> I, I think it's I think it's a combination of everything. <laughs> that they're posting it on social media, that they're still living at home with their parents, and they're decorating their room. Like come I mean, on. I like the whole decoration there. I think the whole every room in the house should be decorated. Every room in the house? Yeah, fuck yeah. I love Christmas. Do you? Yeah. My favorite holiday. I don't know, but I, I feel it. like if I still really? lived at home with my parents, I wouldn't be decorating my room. I'd help decorate the house. I don't put the lights that. up on the roof. Well, I decorated. I mean, I decorated my kids' room. I got them each a tree and shit like that. Did you really? Yeah, they have. They each have a little tree in their room. You know, we have the big Christmas tree in the room. With this little soft guy over here. Great. Now I hate Luigi. <laughs> <laughs> Let's face it. That, that wasn't what made you hate me. <laughs> That's just great. Oh, great, dude. Damn it, Luigi. Uh, I don't dude, know. I just, I just think I think it's corny. I think like if you're gonna like decorate your room, you better be outside on the roof with your parents, putting them fucking lights up. I mean, if you're still living at home with your parents, you shouldn't like flaunt like the hate fucking strikes strikes again, dude. Dude. Like, yeah, fuck Christmas spirit. <laughs> <laughs> I, know, I, I love Christmas. I love Christmas. I love the holidays. I think it's dope. That's why I take all my vacation in the summer because ain't nothing to look forward to in the summer. But if I was living at home, man, I would definitely not be just decorating my bedroom and flossing my bedroom. I haven't seen that. I agree with you on I, that. I but like, as far that. as decorating every room, I think that should be done. Yeah, yeah, I like that. I don't decorate at all. Yeah, yeah. I kind of got that. I got that, that. I got that feel for you, Ram. Fuck that. Did I ever tell you guys the story about my old boss? Um, this is probably like six years ago. Yeah, you told this one. No. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god! Damn! Great! great. great. Now great. Solid <laughs> move. <laughs> solid move. Solid move. Great. <laughs> um. <laughs> Yo, he's in stitches right dude, now. Dude, the guy's cracking himself up, dude. Oh, shit. I'm, I might be still a little fucked up from drinking like 10 of these bad boys yesterday. <laughs> yeah. yeah. It's, that, it that says was, on the can not to drink more than one. Oh, my God. Wait, D-Rock, I want to hear this story. I want to hear this story. <laughs> yeah. um, so my, like, my whole, my, this was like the first year my family basically just moved away. Like my nephew was gone, my mom was gone, and everything was, nobody was around for the holidays, so, and like, I knew my nephew wasn't coming up. I'm like, ah, eh, I don't know, I don't know, like, it was already like December 15th. I'm like, should I even bother getting a tree at this point, you know? Because we were driving past the Christmas tree thing, and my boss is like, get a tree, you fucking Grinch. And I'm like, I don't know, I don't know what's the point. Like, I made a little joke that I was going to hang up one of like the, you know, Car freshener trees. <laughs> yeah. I was like, get one of those. This could be my. That's gonna be my Christmas tree. He's like, oh, you could decorate your body, but you can't decorate your house. I'm like, dude, not the same thing. You know, I'm like, if you came to my house in March and I still had snowmen up and shit, you'd be like, what are you doing? Right. I'm like, year round. So and then that's what led to my my Christmas tree tattoo. Uh, he was yes. breaking my balls about that, so I went and got a fucking that's yeah. You, yeah. Christmas tree. You did tell us, but you could still hear Remy. It's okay. <laughs> <laughs> That's the, that's probably like one of the the best stories for a tattoo. Yeah. Your boss is like, "You're a Grinch. I'm gonna get a tree and I'm, I'm, like, gonna, put, I'm gonna put it right on my leg." Yeah, I got more holiday spirit just, than you, motherfucker. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Yeah. I just got a tattoo for my mom for Christmas. You got a tattoo on you? On me. My mom always wanted me to get a tattoo for her, so I was joking around with her a couple months ago. She goes, "Why don't you get a stamp that says made by mom and put it on your ass?" I was like, "All right, you I'll didn't do, that. do that." Yeah, I have made by mom stamped on my ass. Let's see it. What are you doing? He's showing your ass, dude. You got oh, it. God. Made by mom. Oh, oh man. Man. Dude, <laughs> dude, that's cool. Let me see this. Yo, that's are cool. Are you <laughs> My mom told me I wouldn't do it, so that's her Christmas when present. Did you yeah. do this? Did she know you did it? Uh, yet? Black Friday, I got it done. <laughs> oh man, oh, so Tommy, you got a Tommy, discount. Tommy goes. You, he's like, you fuck. I gotta stare at your ass for an hour now. <laughs> that is hilarious, dude. Did she know you got it yet, or you're just gonna yeah. show her on Christmas? Yo, let me no, let, show stand, you, stand did back you walk up and just drop trout. Like, no, know, I, 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 to, I told Tommy, I was like, yo, um, yeah, this is going on the gram. Stand back yeah. up. I was Mom like, used to wipe this. 
No, I told Tommy I wanted it. Hold on a second. Can you see it? Yeah, I got that. That's fucking hilarious, That's dude. Amazing. That's awesome. Perfect. I got socks face in there, too. <laughs> um, I was trying to look away, <laughs> too. Like, no, I told Tommy like a week or two before, and he's like, yeah, come in. Next to it. I go, no, this is my mom's How did you show her? Like, did you walk in and drop your fucking pants? Like, hey, mom, check it out. Down to the ankles. <laughs> your mom. Yeah, well, yo, yeah, ma, I pulled my pants on. I was like, Merry Christmas. <laughs> I love you, mom. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, she love, didn't think I would. I love you, mom. L-U-H. <laughs> dude, that's hilarious, bro. Yeah, that's funny. That's her Christmas present. You decorate your own body for your mom. I mean, yeah. I mean, she ruins hers for me, so. Hey, that's true, dude. That is true. Speaking some words of wisdom over there come from wow. Luigi today, dude. You know, we're all fucking informational today. Yeah, you fucking are, bro. How'd that feel in your ass cheek? Oh, it sucked. It hurt? Really? Did, every fucking tattoo hurts. All right, yeah. so like, did it hurt more than others? It hurt more than like your arms and shit like okay. that. Oh, really? really? I thought I thought the ass wouldn't hurt that much at all. I didn't think so either, but it did. It or? I gotta be the one to go here, like, and because you, it's no secret you love to get your ass eaten. So how's this working out for you now? When this your girl's gotta look at me, my mom on your ass, so I'm just looking your asshole, bro. I mean, it still it still happens. Yeah. Wow. Still, it's still still she covers that as she's going. I, maybe like she puts happens. her hand over. Hey, you ever been to porta potty, <clears throat> dude? That's great. I'm putting that up. I mean, it feels just the same. Home. Yeah, all, all everyone who's listening the tonight. Same. I'm saying, is it all? Go, go on Instagram no. and, and rate Luigi's tattoo, dude. You, you gotta just, figure if if you're dating me, that's not gonna be the thing that makes it awkward. <laughs> that's yeah. a true story. That's you got true. a good point. Yeah. I can't argue with that. Nick, you should use it for like. With the episode drop uh, tomorrow, just have that be the picture. Yeah, it's gonna be for everything, dude. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, let me see that picture. Yo, can we have? Can yeah, we have Laura this. make that like a sticker for us, like on Instagram, the Instagram stickers? Oh yeah, probably. We're still waiting for our Jits and Tits stickers too. But my friend's got a. <laughs> Actually, that is that's a really. I love that picture. It's a good pick. Yeah, it's that's good. a great. That's, a good, that's, that's good hilarious. Pick. Dude, it came, it came out clean. Good, yeah. It definitely don't look bad. It's Android, baby. Damn. Those fuck you. Those take fucking parents to, decided take to start me out work. to dinner, baby. That's Made good. By mom. Yeah. yeah Shout out amazing. to Mama Luigi. <laughs> <laughs> she actually listened to the. She told me the other day. I think I told you this. She goes, um, "I listened to the podcast, and um, it was the one where you told you talked about fucking the fat chick." <laughs> and um, oh my God. <laughs> she's like, "And you told and you stopped and made her get out and all that." She goes, "She said something." Like that was she goes that wasn't very nice or that was very mean or something like that, um, and like I should have apologized or something like that. So if the fat chick listening, I apologize. <laughs> Aww, dude. And not even by name. Hey, fat chick, if you're listening, I, know, I don't remember I'm the sorry. name. That was nice. Your yeah, sweetheart, dude. The Grinch, right? Here. Just grew. His heart just grew. Yeah. yeah, his heart just well, grew. My mom told me I should do it, so I gotta listen to it. If my mom or D Rock's telling me I'm like being a real asshole, I gotta listen. <laughs> That's your uh, your line in the sand. Like, all right, when they say it, yeah. yeah. I got mom over here, D Rock over here. Everything in the middle is fair play. I don't know what that means for me. I don't know if that's like, <laughs> is that good or bad? That's good. You keep you keep me in line. Right, how did everything go task. with your uh, total motion workshop yesterday? Uh, things went good. Um, <clears throat> we had uh, we only had four people that came out. Uh, we had a couple couple people who uh, canceled last minute. A couple people who were supposed to come from out of state and end up having COVID. Um, but yeah, but uh, no, nah, it was good. Um, my boy uh, Nick over here was uh, got some some good footage. Working hard, bro. Hard. I didn't even get a bottle of water yesterday, man. Damn. Yeah. You got a lay low, though. Get those anyway, bro. <laughs> um, no, yeah, but it was good. It was, uh, they had, like, good questions. There was four people who wanted to learn, you know, who, so it wasn't, like, it, it wasn't, like, strenuous on me by any means. You know? Yeah, they was, all wanted to be there. It yeah. wasn't like they would have rather been somewhere else. Yeah. So, I mean, it was, it, like I said, it was good. There, there was uh, nothing when they went wrong, no hiccups, nothing. Everything was solid. That, yeah. That facility is awesome, too. Like, yeah. Rick, oh, yeah. Rick's gym, it's so fucking nice. Yeah. yeah, no, Rick did a good job over there. But like I said to Remy the other day, man, like, he was definitely in his element. Like, he was very comfortable teaching, going over all, like, the, the movements and explaining them well and shit. And it was a good turnout. Got a, got a little bit of mix, too. We had Rick 
you know, he's a fighter. We had another yeah. guy who was like into track. Track, yeah. And then um, the other two, Brian. Brian, yeah. And his Cast- girlfriend. Brian Costello. Yeah, so and, uh, it was a good mix. They had different questions. Everybody was like getting it. You know, it wasn't that hard. Yeah. I'm sure some of these are probably going to be difficult where guys are just, or girls are going to be like completely uncoordinated, you know? Like, I don't know anybody like, like someone, that. <laughs> someone I know. I don't know anybody like that. Left hand, Terrence. You're the left. Dude. <laughs> no, I do, I do know my lefts and my rights. Like, my rights and my lefts. On a scale lefts. of, like, how uncoor- uncoordinated are we talking about? Like, on a scale of uh, oh. Andrew Stock playing Jenga? Oh. <laughs> that, dude, that, that was shocking to me. You No, no. Uh, a- Andrew Stock playing Beach ball. No, I was a lot more coordinated in beach ball than Django. I don't know. Jill and her girlfriend had us on our heels, dude, until (laughs) until we had to have a talk. Dude. I'm like, dude, we can't lose. You're like, I know, I know. I'm like, then get your fucking head in the game. You were were getting the best me. That was straight off and no sleep. Went straight to the beach. I know. That was a good day, though. That That was was a fucking good day. Jenga though, I'm just I'm an absolute liability. <laughs> <laughs> you are, dude. You had the shakes, bro. You want to make sure, like, you don't lose a game in Jenga. You get me involved. <laughs> <laughs> no, that was fun. That was fun night, man. We were, we were playing Jenga for a while. Yeah. We had that thing stacked up oh, too. That, that jumbo Jenga, it's like two by yeah, four. Yeah, dude. I think Jamie had to stand on the bench to get it to the yeah. top. Remember that? We had some fucking good games. Yeah, those are the ones I wasn't in. No, so no, you good. came in afterwards. <laughs> yeah. After it fell, but no, it was a fun time. It was good. But uh, yeah, yesterday, I uh, just want to say thank you to Rick and No Limits for hosting. And uh, everybody else who came down, Nick, for for the video, all the pictures, video content. Um, Final Cut, baby. Digital Final Media. Cut. Yeah. yeah. Check them that. out. Trying to do something. The only cut, the final one. If you're trying to do something, do something. And uh, yeah, if any other jujitsu sk- uh, jujitsu gyms or MMA places, kickboxing gyms, and want to ha- uh, host a workshop, holler at us. Yeah, for sure. Let us know. Yeah, it's good. It's going to blow up, man. Not too many people know about Landmine or even Total Motion 360 yet, but it's going to be something. <clears throat> they yeah, will. For sure. They will. They will. And yeah, like I was talking to Rick yesterday about it, and like I'm, I'm excited for him to start using it because... Like I'm not a striker, so I know like a lot of this stuff like makes sense, um, like biologically, you know, like how your body moves or kinesiology, I should say. Um, but I want to I want to see how it works, like in you know in the cage or in the ring, and and like how how well it carries over. Yeah, and then how he's gonna use it. Yeah, and then like like that's another thing I'm saying is like every time we we do this uh, workshop and you know somebody learns the system, or or even just picks up the total motion bar, it's immediately five new exercises. Yeah, you know, um, if I give it to D Rock, he's like, oh look, you can do this, this, and this. And right. I'm like, oh shit, never even thought of that. Yeah, you know, yeah, because he's gonna be able to use it for his application. Right, he's a striking coach, he does jet, he'll be able to. Yeah, yeah, that's a cool thing about the bar for sure. Yeah, and same thing like I was saying yesterday. Uh, like when I when me and Danny Stolfi started working, and now he comes up to me all the time, and he's like, "Oh, so I was thinking about this, this, and this." And it's like it, it's cool to see like the things that I'm teaching now evolve into their own like little niches. Yeah, you know, it's definitely cool. So yeah, it's I, I just can't wait till the shit starts blowing up, and we can just go fucking week to week to different gyms and start doing these workshops. Yeah, for sure. It's going to blow up. Definitely. Um, I may be the only one that hasn't tried this yet. I really got to get Oh, it's awesome. Bar. It's no, awesome. No, I haven't tried it yet either. So yeah, we'll fuck with yeah. it one day. I got one here at the house, so yeah, we'll fuck with it for sure. We will. We definitely will. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to master it and then start my own called Full Blown Motion. Nice, dude. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. I love it. Um, <laughs> should we wrap this up, boys? Yeah, sure thing. Stop. <laughs> Thanks for coming on. Thanks for having me. We appreciate the uh, the second round of uh, chits and tits, dude. We appreciate you. <laughs> Come back for a third soon. Yeah, yeah for yeah, sure. We're always welcome. Definitely. Um, shout out our sponsors, man. Lalo. They uh, support us. We support them. You guys want to check out uh, Kava Drink in a Can? Good alternative to alcohol. Check them out. You could uh, check them out at our other sponsorship, uh, Island Kava, right in Patchogue. Go to them. They're a major distributor here in Long Island for Lalo. What's that? If you want some Lalos uh, online, GT20. Yeah, you can order them online. Uh, Shout out to Total Motion 360. Can't wait for uh, everyone to get get the uh, product in their hands. Um, 
Yeah, that's it. Check us out on Spotify. And Pandora. our newest. Oh, yeah. yeah, Relax and Revive. Yeah, that's true. That's true. I almost forgot about them. They Our, joined the tribe. Yeah, Relax and Revive right out in Bayport. It's a great, uh, great place for uh, for recovery. They got the ice bath, the saunas. Massage. They yeah. have a whole bunch of different uh, recovery mo- modalities. Yeah, so, you know. Red light you, therapy. You're an athlete and you're looking for a good recovery day or a way to recover, go check them out. They're right on Main Street or Montauk Highway in Bayport. Yep, tell them your boy sent you. Yeah, chits and tits. Let them know that you get a discount. And stop sending unsolicited dick pics. Yo, for yeah. real. Good point, d Rock. But start sending questions. Jerk off first. Yeah. Well, we got some questions. We <laughs> went to the Flex Fights. It. We got some questions. So next show, we'll definitely have... Uh, some solid questions. Yeah, we'll have some questions that people wrote up but uh yeah check us out on pandora spotify hit us up on uh, instagram if you want to leave us a question of the day youtube facebook all that yeah all right yo thanks for listening peace peace